So hey guys, welcome back to my channel. What if Naruto was the legendary lost son of Hercules the Great Warrior? Movie 1. The world filled with destruction everywhere and a war that devastated the continent, its two major players had come into conflict and the winner would decide the fate of the world. Sasuke, don't do this. Stop, I don't want to hurt you. Naruto shouted from his Kurama avatar. It's too late for that Naruto, you are the only obstacle left to take care of. Die for my dreams. Sasuke replied in an aggressive tone as he aimed at Naruto and launched his strongest attack. Naruto utilized the power of nature to bridge the gap between their powers as Sasuke had armed himself with the nine bijus power and attacked in retaliation to neutralize the attack but the attacks were too strong and they broke the fabric of reality. Both fighters tried to resist effect but it was too strong. Naruto saw that Sasuke was about to fall into the broken space and reacted by extending his chakra arm and pushing him. This action caused him to get hit by the brunt of the explosive nature of the attacks and he fell through the hole. Sasuke's Suzano had broken down from the damage and his body was injured as well, he fell from the atmosphere with no protection to the ground. He crawled up to his feet and chuckled as he had won and nothing could get in his way anymore. Thank you Naruto. I will always remember you as a friend and the world will remember you as the hero. So rest in peace my friend. Sasuke muttered as he sat down to rest. It might boggle the mind of people but even immortal beings of enormous might and age, do act in a childish manner. People would wish that was just a fantasy but truth was not far from the incredibly retarded legends mortals had written. Many millennia had passed and it would be expected for them to actually learn from their mistakes but stupidity and paranoia is hard to cure. The Olympians once again had started something that could bring the end of an age as on a peaceful night a portal appeared in the sky and a body fell to the ground. The body emanated enormous power which could be felt by all supernatural beings. Especially by Zeus the king of the Olympians who was the most paranoid of all. Once he sensed it he did not hesitate to move and he appeared in the desert where the body crashed. He looked at it and saw that it was just a child but the power made him feel insignificant, which could not be allowed. What is it husband? Hera his queen inquired while being followed by Athena, Artemis and Apollo. A being, that cannot be allowed to exist. Fortunately he is already dead, the wretched signature of this energy disgusts me, Zeus said with clear distaste as he pronounced each syllable. How should we deal with the body's removal, he might revive. I wonder, should we be actually deciding this without giving the person a chance to show himself? Hera said as she felt it was unfair for such a person as the child to just disappear, he gave off a feeling that she liked. Loyalty and pure love. There is no need, we can't take the risk. To avoid its resurrection we will divide its powers so even if it comes back there will be no threat. Zeus ignored his wife's words without any hesitance. Zeus said that with a serious tone and the others agreed even if they were not okay with the decision. He looked at the earth as it tried to devour the corpse and whipped his hand so that the sand scattered while he picked the body. On Mount Olympus Zeus appeared with his entourage where he started the process of separating the powers of the corpse but he realized even in his released form he could not make it move as he wished. It really is an existence that cannot be allowed. He muttered through gritted teeth and turned to the others who were equally as shocked. You all participate as well he said as the others nodded in consent but even that was not enough as the energy was becoming unstable which could lead to an explosion. Damn monster Zeus cursed and summoned the others. After a grueling process they were able to divide the power into ten pieces and those were given to Hephaestus to forge into worthy artifacts for their chosen. Make sure it is worthy of all this effort or else. Zeus said to Hephaestus as he left with heavy steps like something was compelling him and his eyes shone with brilliance. In the darkness floated a soul that was very pure but it had damage done to it making it unstable but fortunately a green energy gathered around it and protected it, healed it and gave it form. Poor little child, suffered so much but you still held such ideals. How do you take such pain and hatred? A woman of beauty that surpassed mortals, she gave of a motherly aura that showed care and her energy seemed to resonate with the soul. Her eyes were green and her hair was black as night, her gestures were filled with majesty and slowly she embraced Naruto into her arms as she felt the desire to comfort him. Let this pain go away and you shall always stay true to your nature. I feel alone but your presence brings me joy and a feeling I never knew. Would it be selfish of me to desire your companionship? She questioned as she stared at the unconscious soul that was in her embrace, she looked at his face and traced it with her fingers. I have never seen a being like you, someone that can resonate with my domain. 
Will you accept if I ask you stay with me and not go outside into the cruel world? She inquired in a calm tone. She talked to him with no desire for answers but just to satisfy her loneliness. Three months passed by in the outer world as Naruto's soul gathered strength to exist without a crutch and finally it was time to wake up. Awaken my child. You have slept for long time. A motherly tone filled with affection spoke and the being that had formed opened its eyes. The figure had green eyes and blonde hair, its body was well built for combat. The figure's eyes fluttered open and confusion was clear on its face and voice, where am I and who are you? You are within the nature's domain and I am Gaia the primordial. How do you feel my child, does it hurt anywhere? She asked with concern which was shown on her face, a woman of beauty that was out of the world. The voice soothed him and he could feel the similarity between it and nature energy, I feel all right but my body, there is something wrong with it. I feel so lethargic and weak, what happened to me? The young man said with his face scrunched in annoyance and confusion as he felt his body. I am sorry my child that I could not protect you from the greed of the world. Your power has been stolen by the ones called Olympians and to be sure you never got it back they made artifacts from it after dividing it into pieces. The artifacts are scattered and even I have hard time locating them as I cannot affect the world according to the ancient laws. Gaia said with sad tone but hatred could be felt within her words when she said Olympians. Olympians. And why do you call me your child? I am the son of Kashina Uzumaki. The young man moved his head and looked at Gaia with an earnest expression. I call you my child because you are the closet being to me, I have never felt such a bond in my long existence. It brightens my heart with happiness so please allow this selfishness, she requested with such sweet tone. I don't mind, you seem like a very nice person and I feel no malice, he answered with a smile that made Gaia happy. Thank you for your acceptance. Now back to topic, Olympians would be considered my grandchildren but they are like insane children with power on their hand, there is no evil that they have not done and no limit they have not broken. The world has mortals all over it but the Olympians do what they want without consequences while everyone else suffers. I will not force my perception on you my child but let you decide by yourself. Gaia said with venom in her words which showed what she felt about them. They sound like some real assholes that are in a need of a beating. Naruto replied as he gripped his fist, he didn't like the sound of that and especially since they just stole his powers. They deserve way worse my child. They are the ones who killed you. You would have woken up if they had not torn your body apart, she said with clear hatred. The young man's face could be going through change at the words and set on anger, are you sure? Yes, I witnessed it all and failed to protect you. If you want to check for their information go and check the net for the Olympians and you will find the records. Even though to mortals those are legends but they are the truth. Thank you for your kindness especially for giving me another chance. I have so much left to do. Even though it's been delayed at least I have a chance to continue on my path once I am at full power. Naruto said in a grateful tone, he didn't know why she helped him but he knew he will repay this favor. Good, my children do not lose hope. Even though they have taken your powers, you still have control over the elements to a very limited range and with my blessing you are still above normal humans. You are the best Gaia. I promise to help you in any way for this favor or else my name is not Uzumaki Naruto. Naruto said in a happy tone as he hugged Gaia. In the Garden of Olympus, the queen could be seen sitting alone with a melancholic look. It had been a week since that incident took place and she had taken part in killing of a being which represented her values so closely. It had made her feel guilty and ashamed, and regretful but she couldn't speak up in that moment as she didn't want to destroy the good mood she had going on with her husband. Hera leaned on a tree as she held a sunflower in her hand and pondered on the ongoings of the world. Zeus has been really secretive since that incident and so reclusive. What happened? I thought everything would be alright now after the war but it seems to be getting worse. He hasn't even slept with me since that day, is that even supposed to be remotely possible? Hera questioned in disbelief at what she had come to witness and she didn't the answers but she felt something was wrong. She had checked with Apollo and see if there was any threat, and it was not a good day as she heard a dark prophecy. Is it the prophecy making him act like this? Did we just invite our own downfall once again? What is done is done, I can only try my best as the queen. I have to make the two sides work together as the threat is too great for them alone. Hera thought of the Roman and Greek camps, and decided to act. In the domain of Gaia, Naruto was still floating around conversing with her in a calm manner. Thank you my child for such a precious promise, I will also do my best to help. 
Gaia said with a smile, she felt happy with the show of affection and brought maternal love in her ancient heart. At the moment I know of only the owners of four pieces. One is Hercules the son of Zeus, he is the strongest holder of the piece as he is an immortal being with a lot of experience in fighting but unlike his father who uses lightning he fights with pure strength. Which is why he was given the steam element, they got that information through snippets of it which connected to the ability themselves so they know what each element represented. Second is Percy Jackson son of Poseidon, he received the water element. The child is also strong and the leader of the new generation. Third is Nico D'Angelio son of Hades, he received the yin piece as he commands darkness. This child is very reclusive and doesn't stay in one place. Finally it's another son of Zeus, Jason Grace who received the power of lightning while the other pieces are most likely to be given to people close to the last three that is my conclusion. Gaia spoke in a friendly tone without any malice when speaking of the Demis. Are the people all bad or good, I wish to know your opinion? Naruto asked as he wanted to at least have something to work with to be on guard or not. These children are sad creatures as they have suffered because of their parents and I won't say they are bad but even then be careful as they are only just dogs kept by their parents. They won't believe a word from you, to them you are a monster and if given a prophecy they will try their best to vanquish you. Gaia said in a sad and worried tone, she didn't want her child to get hurt. I will be careful and thank you for the information. I wish to see the world so can I take my leave and is there a way for me to return? Very well I will send you to the surface and I will send the method to your brain so when you need a place to rest or talk with me, you can always return. Gaia said with love as she hugged him like family that he never had. After that Naruto was teleported outside the domain where he appeared, his body formed slowly from the ground in an alleyway of New York. Naruto opened his eyes to see and felt that the current place was very unhealthy, it lacked the natural energy of his world and it made him sick. He walked from the location to look for a library where he could find the information needed, internet. I am happy Gaia didn't forget to cram that into my head or else I would be lost. Naruto thought as he walked with casual steps, he was confident in his strength. Naruto walked on the busy streets while taking in the new surroundings which felt really weird from the large buildings to the motor vehicle things. These things could be applied but with chakra so that is not bad for nature. He muttered as he walked the people gave of many negative emotions that he didn't like. He walked around for some time when his thoughts came to what happened before this, I wonder how everyone is doing after Kagaya's defeat. I hope Sasuke is alright, wish he hadn't fought me to land us in such a position. Though what was that light greenish thing that I saw flying towards Sasuke when I was falling through the dimensional gap? I felt immense emotional grief and desire from it, wonder what it was. Naruto mused as he held his chin but he couldn't connect anything with it. He didn't let his thoughts lead him into any accidents but decided to forego the library as he was having difficult time finding it and just went to a nearby internet cafe where he read through the legends and found himself disgusted beyond reason. I can't believe such beings could exist. They are worse than anything in my world. Even Orochimaru seems tame in comparison. Naruto thought as he walked out of the cafe and followed his instincts directly while thinking of his actions. This mist thing really is useful or else I might have trouble. Naruto said as he sat down in a park that was very large and gave him a sense of liberation. Naruto brought his hand forward and wished for a flame, it appeared. He tried all the elements and as Gaia mentioned they lacked power without the chakra, so he had to completely rely on close combat where he can apply the different elements and tactics to take out his targets. I really wish I didn't have to do this but this world needs to be liberated from these Olympians rule. They are worse than Orochimaru who at least had a purpose even if it was twisted it never caused much death but these have caused death over the most pointless things. Naruto thought with his head in his hands looking forward with his face in deep concentration. What to do now? Should I travel and see a little bit first then find my first target? Naruto muttered to no one but then he sensed a being flying overhead. It seemed to give off peaceful and childish vibes, a harpy Naruto thought when he saw it and felt like he wanted a closer interaction. Naruto traveled hastily as he found the harpy perched on top of tree looking towards a picnic table where he saw an old man that was whacking other harpies to death for trying to steal his food. He tried to remember who it was but he didn't have a perfect memory or anything so the only thing he remembered was that the old man had been cursed by Zeus to have his food stolen by harpies but it seems now the harpies were the ones suffering while the old man enjoyed it with twisted humor. Naruto watched from afar as the harpy he had followed seemed to be very different from the others especially a lot smarter as the others ones kept on doing the same thing. 
It was smaller and it had red hair along with beautiful appearance that he found charming. Should I kill him or talk to him? He seems crazy. Naruto contemplated as his face scrunched up in concentration. On the other hand the red-haired harpy seemed to be going in for the kill, it saw an opportunity and sweeped in to steal the food but suddenly the old man turned around and whacked her. God the harpy screamed in pain as it fell to the ground with an injured wing, it tried to get away but the sadistic old man didn't want her to do so and started whacking her with a smile on his face. You bastards have tormented me for so long, it is your time now. The old man said with glee, his face twisted in a disgusting smile of pleasure. The red one unlike its sisters did manage to scratch its tormentor, Naruto felt wrong from the scene and couldn't hold back any longer from interfering. With anger flowing through his body he rushed towards the old man with a fist but the old man moved like he knew the attack was coming. Unfortunately for the old man Naruto wasn't a mindless or skill-less beast, as he dodged the weed hacker and punched him in the face to the old man's astonishment. How could I not see further? were the last thought of the old man as his head was smashed in by the enormous force. Naruto looked at his hand in horror, he had just killed the man by mistake, he shook his head to calm himself down from the unintended kill and reminded himself of the evil the old man emanated. He was not good, I did was right. It was his fault, making me react with such precision Naruto muttered to calm his nerves and help the red-haired one up as it tried to run away. Don't worry. I won't hurt you Naruto said in a gentle manner as he approached the red one. Hearing his voice and sensing his presence the red one seemed to calm down, you will not hurt Ella. Yes, I will not hurt Ella Ella stopped moving and let Naruto help her but as he only had tiny amounts of his original power it took some time to heal her but he took his time admiring her form. It was something different as none of these species existed back home and he wondered what more he could he see. Ella likes the feeling from the light, Ella also loves books. She commented on the greenish glow that formed around his hand. Oh, you like to read he was surprised as he thought these beings were too scatterbrained for that, must be a unique one among her kind. Yes, Ella loves to read. Words calm Ella down, words don't hurt Ella. She said so innocently while moving her head. Such a sad girl Naruto thought as he touched her face and then her back where he saw a scar, he tried his best to heal it. Looks like you found a friend already Naruto heard a voice from behind and he turned around with a joyful smile. Gaia he exclaimed in a cheerful mood, her presence just made the depressiveness of the world vanish. Yes, it was Gaia the primordial in all her tiny glory. Naruto looked at her tiny form and found it cute, she was like a small fairy. How, I thought you couldn't move. Yes, but this isn't my real form. This is just a fragment and with it I formed this body through mud. It does not hold any power but I wish to accompany you so that you might not lose the way or get lonely. Gaia said in motherly tone, she didn't continue with the other reason. I was feeling lonely and wanted to stay with you. Thank you. I am happy that you care. It will definitely be better with you here. Naruto said as he caught her in his hand and rubbed her tiny little cheeks. I think that is enough, don't you think Gaia said with a smile as she shook her head at his antics. Sorry, you just look so adorable like that. I appreciate the compliment Gaia muttered as she perched on his shoulder. Ella watched the two individuals converse from her position, she had flown on top of a branch and watched from above. What do you intend to do with the harpy? Gaia questioned as she looked at Ella. Nothing, I just wanted to save her. Naruto replied casually as it was natural to him. Okay, so did you have anything planned? I will just travel around for a while to judge with my own eyes the people of this world. I mean the Demis. Naruto replied in a calm tone as he cleared his thought of his kill. What about the artifacts? Gaia was surprised as she had thought that Naruto would hunt the Demis now that he knew about the cruelty of the Olympians. I will collect them obviously but it's not like they are going to disappear or something. Naruto said nonchalantly as he turned to Ella, Ella it was nice meeting you but I will be going now so be careful. Naruto walked away from the clearing as Ella watched with a clear gaze. Aphrodite. I beg of you to accept my request. I have not loved you and you have not loved me but this involves my poor children and yours as well. Zeus has gone insane and he has forced me into making such abominations. Please get them away from the children or they will suffer worse than death. Hephaestus pleaded in a pitiful tone as he entered the palace. I have never loved you but I am touched by your love for the little ones. I govern love so I will comply with this request and if possible I will stop him. 
Aphrodite replied in a lovely tone as she decided to move but she realized that she couldn't teleport. You have been naughty, my children. Do you really think I would allow any missteps to happen? Zeus muttered in a calm tone, he smiled gently and his face looked completely like a loving father's but his words spoke another thing. Zeus, do you think you can get away with this? I am here ranked than you and my domain is love, an eternal and powerful emotion. Do you think you can fight me? Aphrodite challenged, she knew his actions would spread hatred now as her husband just sent her the information about the artifacts, which could be summed up as abominations. Haha <laughs> challenge me, little slut have you actually fought in your pitiful life? While you were getting plowed and seated, I was not just sitting my immortal ass doing nothing. You dullards seem to be under an impression that I actually have nothing to do but on contrary to such, I spend time growing stronger and learning of the ancient arts. Zeus chuckled and explained, he knew these subjects were underestimating his intelligence. Training or such can no bridge the gap of natural order and power so shove those words up your ass. Aphrodite was feeling annoyed at being looked down on with such impudence and started to make her move when she was chained to the ground. The seal of immortals, such a powerful creation and it was worth the pretty penny it cost. Now stay down until this blows over, I have shut down Olympus so that none can leave. Zeus said in a calm tone as he walked away, closing the doors so none could enter without his permission. I am sorry hubby but it seems we are stuck together. Aphrodite tried to brighten up the gloomy atmosphere but looking at his face filled with despair was enough to tell her that she was not going to enjoy her stay. You know I also found the bad things you have done. I knew you would find it, I wish to let you know through my own words but talking of personal sins is not an easy thing. Gaia said with some guilt and sadness. Why? Naruto asked curiously as he found her so kind what led her to such actions. It was the corruption of the mortals and immortals that affected my domain. The children of mine had done evil and killed each other. I loved them all so it made me angry. I did dome stupid deeds before but now I do not have the ability to cancel them out. The ancient being from the origin of the world has put hold on all primordial beings. Gaia said each word in a melancholic mood. Does my presence disgust you? She questioned with underlying fear and uncertainty. No, you have changed and that is good enough in my books, he said with a smile while he walked in the city. Thank you for accepting my faults, it makes me really happy. Gaia smiled as she felt some of her burdens on her shoulders disappear. You are welcome but it seems we have company Naruto said as he stopped in another alleyway so as to not make trouble for others. Standing in front of him was Ella. What do you want Ella? He asked gently as he didn't want to make her scared but she didn't say anything and presented a feather to him, it was red so he knew it was hers. He took it but he was confused, what does this mean? Is she trying to court him, or offer him friendship? Don't think so hard my child, the harpy wishes to be close friends with you. She is giving the feather to you, which means she likes you a lot. Oh. Thank you, I accept. Ella let's be good friends. Naruto said with a laugh as he hugged Ella who just rubbed her head in his chest. He gave off the aura of nature and no human presence as he was formed by Gaia so it was understandable. Naruto rubbed her head as well. Wouldn't it be dangerous for her to be my side? It should NT be a problem at the moment. Why now? The gates of Underworld have been opened so any monster that dies can easily walk out. She said with a small tremble in her tone. Is it one of your children? Yes and one of my other mistakes, if they know about you then they will also try to kill you. They are the same as the Olympians, jealous and filled with paranoia. It seems to run in the family very deeply. Hum. I am not worried so don't be sad. Naruto said as he rubbed her tiny head with his finger. Okay, oh my. I almost forgot. The demi-child you killed was the son of Neptune so I have collected the immortal side of his existence to power you up. Gaia said as she took out a golden ball. It is your choice, do you accept it and continue to kill other beings with power? It doesn't matter if they are monster or otherwise, this all I can do you for you. Naruto took the golden ball and swallowed, he trusted Gaia and he knew everything she said was the truth. The ball melted inside and he felt his body heat up. Energy seemed to seep into his very being and he knew he had grown much stronger. I am happy with just this, if we do come across such situations then you can do this but I will not actively hunt down supernatural beings. You really are too nice but that's what I like about you. Thanks Naruto whispered in a shy tone at being complimented so directly by such a beautiful existence, it made his heart beat faster. Well let's go Ella. Our long journey together starts now. 
he said with a smile as he started walking to explore more of the city. Ella squeaked once and followed along from the air but when Naruto saw her he thought, it would be better if she could just stay on my shoulder like Gaia, it seems really hard with that weak body. As he walked he decided to ask Gaia, can you do that energy transfer for Ella as well, she looks really malnourished. Gaia smiled from her sitting position, hum, I was expecting that. Hee <laughs> hee, yes it can be done. Am I so predictable? Naruto questioned with a smile. It's not bad, when people can tell that you mean well. So are you going to hunt monsters to feed them to Ella? Gaia inquired curiously, she enjoyed watching his face and his actions as they were refreshing. If we come across any dangerous ones then I will kill them, at that time make some for Ella. No problem thanks Naruto muttered in a happy tone, life was looking to be good once again. Naruto explored the city, once more realizing how different the world is from his home but he wished to go back more and more as he saw things, he didn't feel right in this kind of atmosphere even if the city was the biggest one he had ever seen and there were many interesting things, it didn't really matter. The people here are really filled with negative emotions he muttered as he walked. Hum. The world is very fast moving and things have changed a lot from the past. These changes make it easier for people to have a problem. It's just not easy for mortals to live in peace anymore even when the supernatural side is hidden from them. Gaia replied as she placed her hand on her tiny chin and watched his expression. The world was boring thing to see as she had watched it from the beginning. Is that so, it really is the same wherever you go. What does your world look like? She asked in a curious tone, she would be happy if he shared more of his life with her. It is a beautiful place of nature, I think you would love it. Though, it is a lot more dangerous than here as there are many beings with power roaming freely. Even then I would really wish to see such a place this world has become really corrupt and it will take who knows how long to cure it. Gaia said with sigh. Naruto rubbed her tiny head, don't be sad, I will make sure to cure it when I get my power back. Gaia smiled at his encouragement and nodded, the trio walked peacefully without encountering anything of the supernatural and only some mortals fighting here and there. The sun had set and was getting dark, which reminded Naruto that he was basically homeless. Where do you think I should stay? There is a park nearby where the nymphs reside, you can stay with them or we can find another place if you wish. I am okay with your suggestion, what about you Ella? Naruto nodded and called out to Ella who had perched onto the lamppost. Ella is okay, anywhere where it does not hurt. Well so we are decided but Gaia I want to know why haven't I felt hungry yet? He asked with curiosity in his voice. The ball of energy provided you with the required nutrients but you will need to eat by tomorrow or you can get one more. She said with a comfortable smile as she felt really good to be in contact with Naruto he was just sunny and filled with natural energy, and it was not clashing with him. Naruto nodded and changed his direction to where Gaia pointed, on the way he saw actual homeless people which was a new situation for him as in Konoha everyone had a place to stay. He did feel sad for them but nothing he could do about it and walked ignoring their depressive looks but suddenly he came to a halt. In front of him were three tall giants of a height of three meters and above, he wasn't stopped because of their appearance or anything as he had seen people taller but what stopped him was that these three giants were cooking the homeless people on the side of the street and no one knew of the reality. The disgusting smell wafted to him and he felt himself gag, and only his experience with gore stopped him from hurling. Lastragonian giants Gaia muttered with disdain how are they killing people so openly? Naruto said with voice full of emotions and suppressed rage, his voice trembled as he spoke. The Olympians don't really care about humans especially those who don't believe in them while the demikids are just afraid of getting hunted down. It is reasonable since they are outnumbered and not strong enough. Gaia said with contempt as she really hated the thought of them. The humans are killed by monsters and they are either completely erased from memories by the mist or some accident is made up. Even though Gaia said those facts she herself didn't care about them either as these would wound up killing each other later or they only made the world a worst place. The only exception she felt was from Naruto so she would help if he desired. Naruto was looking at the giants with clear killing intent now, ready to collect their essence. I am ready but be careful. No need to worry, he said to Gaia and turned to Ella, rest here and don't intervene. Ella looked at his serious expression and nodded as she sat down with Gaia to watch the spectacle. Naruto walked slowly to the man-eating giants and with a rush he increased his pace but unlike before he didn't have chakra to mask his footsteps which made a lot of noise once he ran especially on the roads of the modern world. The giants turned around as they heard someone running towards them, the bigger one who was three. 
four meters tall looked at Naruto like he was a tasty treat. They didn't only eat humans as monsters also hunted each other especially these giants who liked humanoid beings. Brothers we got another tasty treat offering itself to us. Big brother let me do the honor then. Last time you had your fun with that demi kid. The giant with blonde hair and a giant baseball bat said as he looked towards the approaching foe while the third was just occupied with eating. The older giant nodded and let him take the monster coming their way so the blonde giant stood up and looked towards Naruto with a wicked smile. At the moment when the giant started running Naruto had also sped up, the giant swung the bat to smash him but Naruto dodged with ease and punched him in the face as he had leaned down with the force. The punch did hurt but it lacked the strength to really do much to these giants, that hurt. The giant said as he got hit by a kick that followed the punch. They are more durable than I expected guess it is time to use the power. Naruto mused as he held his hand like knife and coated it with wind power. He was used to making Rasenshuriken by now so it was easy enough make a sharp current. The enemy didn't realize the change and swung his bat with more vigorous movements which were large and wasteful in his eyes. Naruto dodged the clumsy attacks with ease and avoided the hand that was about to grab at him, then his own hand shot out with wind coating it. The giant screamed as his veins were cut and Naruto followed it up with jumping over his shoulders and with lighting on both his hands, he hit the giant's skull shocking him. Ah the giant screamed as his brain was getting electrocuted but the current wasn't that strong so Naruto had followed it with his knife hand cutting its windpipe. The giant fell down in anguish while it tried in feudal resistance to hold back the blood while Naruto ran towards the others. You fucking bastard the older one roared and rushed with his axe. Naruto ducked through the attack which came at him horizontally from the left side and pushed away from the knee attack that followed, and he retaliated with his knife hand carving its skin like knife on butter. Gah it roared and thrashed and wildly, its movement became messier while the silent one threw something at Naruto which he dodged and it hit the older one. Naruto saw from his peripheral vision that it was a human and it angered him so he kicked the older one with his right foot while coating it with cutting power. The kick had large amounts force and wind power concentrated on it so it cut the neck cleanly. The older giant died with disbelief on its face and Naruto continued on his path of carnage as he ran towards the retreating foe. Never show your back to an enemy Naruto shouted as he jumped onto its back and slammed his fingers into its ears. It screamed in unholy terror and pain as lightning current directly pierced into its brain and with slight trembles the corpse fell to the ground. That was a really nice show. I want mind watching you fight for a long time. Gaia said in appreciation at the skills shown, he moved so naturally without any hesitation and wasteful movements. Hu Naruto let out a breath to calm his nerves and his adrenaline rush. It was nothing. They were just thugs with no skill. I am used to fighting skilled fighters. Naruto said with a somber tone as people had died while he was fighting. Gaia realized that the human death had affected him so she flew to his face and made him look at her, Naruto, it is not your fault. You were outnumbered and didn't have your powers. These things happen so don't kill yourself over such unavoidable things. You can't always save people. As people are dying every second so does that mean you will also grieve for them. Just take these moments as motivation and drive yourself to your goal or else you will die slowly from the inside. Gaia tried to motivate him and brighten up his spirit as she disliked when his sunny disposition darkened even a bit, it brought her pain like she was connected to him. Naruto felt that the words were personal and they resonated within him, thank you Gaia, I am sorry to show such a pathetic side of mine when I am shinobi. No, it's alright to feel bad, it helps you from becoming a monster, Gaia said as she touched his cheek. That tickles Naruto laughed as Gaia touched his cheek with her tiny hand and Ella had also joined in comforting him with her wings that tickled his body. Ella is here for you so don't feel like that, Ella will share her books. Thanks Ella, I feel better now Naruto rubbed her head. Here are three new power pills Gaia said as she produced three new ones from the monster's essence which would delay their return by years and by then the gate should be closed. Naruto took the pills and gave the big one to Ella, Ella eat this, it is good for you. Ella looked at him and opened her mouth, to which Naruto smiled and put the pill in her waiting mouth. She proceeded to gulp it down and she shook visibly as her body changed at perceived rate, she became slightly taller now standing at one. Seven meters and her body filled up so that she was not skinny anymore. How do you feel? Ella feels great, Ella feels like she can take Phineas she said excitedly. That's a very small goal let's see you take on something bigger, huh? Naruto said suggestively. 
Ella will fight giants and beat them too she said with a wide smile. Stop playing with the kid and eat. Okay. Okay no hurry Naruto said as he took both the pills but his body didn't change visibly as he had well built body already but if he estimated how strong he was physically, I should have half the strength of that big giant. Am I right? It should be close. Gaia said with her face lost in thought. Meh. It's good enough for now. It is better than three times human strength I started off with. Sorry for only giving that much it's not like I had any choice. Gaia said with a pout. I am not complaining so don't show that face even though it looks cute as well. Naruto floundered as he tried to make her change her expression. Just kidding she smiled which made him smile as well. Well everything is good so let's go towards our destination. Naruto said as he started walking but before that he picked up the axe that had not disappeared. Sometimes monsters leave behind some items that feels like a game. You can only blame the Olympians who wished to provide their heroes with items once a monster was defeated. Hum. Well it's good thing for me. I hope to see one of these demi kids with an actual weapon. I feel naked without something in my hand though the axe will suffice but I have never used this kind before. If you want I can easily guide you Gaia said not now, if I need it I will ask he said with a serious tone with dark undertone to his words which Gaia understood and nodded. With that the conversation came to halt and they traveled silently while taking in the surroundings. Father, are you really here? Jason questioned as he looked at Zeus who was standing in front of him. I am here son and I am deeply sorry for my actions, and not being there for you. Zeus replied in a gentle tone as he walked closer and hugged Jason. He had decided to meet his son as he was getting ready to go on their new quest, inside the house dedicate to his children. I do not blame you, I understand that you have responsibilities and laws to follow but please can you bring back my memories? Jason questioned. That is out of my control. I do not have the ability but do not worry as they will return soon. Zeus replied as he patted his child's back in a fatherly manner. Thank you for the response. Is there anything I can do for you father? Jason asked as he wished to create more opportunities for meeting his father. That is nothing and I am here to gift you with an important item. It is the culmination of my love for you my child and made with the powers of lightning that I provided personally so use it with pleasure and keep yourself safe. I must be going now as time has passed. Zeus said in a gentle tone as he kissed Jason on the forehead and disappeared. Jason felt touched and now felt the love of a father, and he desired to have more. He looked at the artifact and clenched it in his fist with a look of happiness. Father, I will live up to your expectations and never lose this gift. It is the first thing I have gotten from you personally and I will keep it with me for life, even if it became scrap metal. Jason thought as he got ready for the mission. Harlem Neighborhood Naruto stopped at the entrance of a park where he felt the land was filled with natural energy. Why does this place feel like this? Naruto asked as he looked at the entrance. Oh, that is because nymphs are nature spirits so wherever they reside the land is filled with such feeling. Gaia said as she realized what he was pointing at. Naruto entered the park and felt gazes from all sides on him, they seemed to be shy. Can't blame them. Their life has been very difficult these days because of the pollution and the occasional Olympian trying to force themselves on them. They have already given up on the main leaders of the Olympians giving them justice for their grievances and only serve them for survival. She said with contempt remembering the countless times she witnessed the poor creatures get taken by force. Naruto didn't feel right imagining such horrible things and his dislike for his yet to be seen enemies grew, he felt real desire to kill for once in his life. He rubbed his finger on Gaia's head, don't worry I will make it stop. Thanks she felt better as she forgot about the things and focused on him. Are you close to these beings as they are nature spirits and the world is your domain? Yes, so you don't have to worry about them betraying you for the Olympians and they are already curious about you as you give off a similar presence. Gaia giggled as the wind nymphs flew around Naruto. Naruto felt the scene was magical and picturesque as the wind nymphs flew around while chattering and the water from the lake was forming into a woman, even the trees turned out to be dryads. Of the wind nymphs one was bigger and seemed regal, she came forward and asked, who are you, you feel like Mistress Gaia? Hum, how should I answer this? Let's go with, Gaia's champion, I am her chosen to fight against the evil of the world. Naruto said laughingly as Gaia felt her cheeks blush. The nymph stared at him and the tiny Gaia, according to her feelings and senses she could tell they both had very strong connection to Gaia so he might be telling the truth. Very well, do you require assistance O champion of Gaia? 
Haha <laughs> Naruto snickered at being called that but managed to reply. I just want to rest here and you guys can keep me company, it's my first time seeing your kind. My name is Alice and I welcome you into the sanctuary of nymphs. The others would be happy to keep you company. Thank you Naruto said to her back as she drifted away, he could feel dislike for men from her, she must have suffered under someone's dirty hands. Don't think too much about such things and rest, it affects your inner self by always being open to dark thoughts. Gaia warned. You were right. I should nt brood too much on the negatives of the world. It is beautiful and I should try to focus on the good as well or I might lose faith. Naruto said as he rubbed his hair and walked towards the trees. He sat down on the grass and it felt really comfortable like an expensive bed, it was just like that one time when he enjoyed his stay at Shein's lavish palace. So comfortable Naruto let out a satisfied sound as he lay down, the nymphs giggled at his expression. It's the dryads making it easier for you. Thanks guys Naruto perked up in a sitting position and waved to the nearest one. The wind nymphs came close to his stretched hand and he could feel the touch, it was definitely different form touching flesh and blood. The hazy body moved in excitement from his touch as it had gotten something that it loved. So when he called for Ella to come down so that they can sleep together, the wind nymphs covered him up. Naruto didn't mind and just smiled but when Ella came down and lay in his embrace, he realized something. He could feel the naked chest of Ella touching him and its heat was transferred to him. How did I not see that she was naked the whole time Naruto said with embarrassment. Gaia who was sitting on the nearby tree felt like laughing, I thought you were used to such thing that's why you didn't react. It made her feel better knowing that he was pure and untouched. No, I think I was still getting my head around this new world. His cheeks were red in shame and he kept his mind out of the gutter. Ella didn't understand what he was going through and just rubbed her head in his chest while keeping her claws away, he was covered in her wings. Naruto looked at the innocent girl, tomorrow I will get you something to cover up, okay. Okay, Ella is happy with anything, can Ella also get more books? Yes, we will get more books but not now. Ella felt sad and moved her head to the side, when? When we have a place to stay. Don't be sad it won't take long and I am here with you he said as he rubbed her head. Ella nodded happily as he touched her and both fell asleep comfortably within the embrace of nature while Gaia watched over them as she didn't require sleep. Far away from them, the three nymphs were talking to each other. Alice is it safe to let them in the dryad leader inquired. They are okay, the boy said he is the champion of Gaia and he is pure when I examined him so we are safe. Is he really the champion? The water nymph asked curiously. I am not sure but he has this overwhelming feeling of nature to him so I do feel he is telling the truth. Don't tell me you could not feel it? Alice said as she looked toward Naruto's direction and realized the little fairy was looking in their direction and she was compelled to look away unconsciously. If he is the champion should we ask him for his help? The situation is getting worse as the monsters have been set loose without a limit and I heard from my little ones that a dragon had been sighted. The water nymph said with a serious expression. What? The dryad screamed in terror quiet Alice commanded. The water nymph covered the dryad who was shivering in fear as she was haunted by nightmares of her distant past. We will try talking to him or else we will move from this location Alice said as she looked at the place with melancholy, this wasn't the first time they had to run as being weak without a protector was harsh in this cruel world. In his dreams Naruto saw the war once again in the final battle with his so-called best friend but as he analyzed it more closely he realized that he was the only one to feel like that and Sasuke had been a lost cause. He looked at the visions with a sad look when a light green clad individual seemed to be searching for him. Who is that? He couldn't see that closely for some reason and he didn't know why he was actually seeing it in the first place. The scene changed once again and he saw a necklace that had the design of a lightning bolt with power flowing through it. He saw a boy with determined expression fighting against something wearing it and it empowered his strikes with lightning. That should be mine he felt his soul cry out for it and felt emptiness inside which lit the suppressed anger. Who? I will get it back once I have understood a little bit more. Don't want to be led by the nose. The scene went away and he was in space looking down at the world which confused him as he had never seen it from such a place. Did Gaia's powers give me such ability but what does it even mean? he felt confused at the random scenes. Don't go overboard child a voice spoke to him in the darkness of space, it was filled with power that he had never felt and not even Kaguya carried such presence as his soul felt mortal fear like never before and he woke up with a scream. 
His body shook at the feeling of that being and his eyes looked around wildly for its presence but nothing. The sudden noise and movement had woken up Ella who took flight while the wind nymphs had scattered in fright. Gaia who had been enjoying his sleeping face was surprised when it changed to terror and he woke with a scream. What happened? I don't know, I saw visions of my world and then I was in space. Till here it was okay but then a voice spoke it affected my soul so much that I felt fear. I just don't understand. Naruto body still shook from the meeting and he was trying to calm himself down. Gaia's face fell when she came to conclude who could have met him, she flew over to his head and patted him. Don't worry Naruto nothing will happen to you, just listen to what it said and nothing bad will happen, she said with a motherly tone as she felt helpless against that being. Naruto took some breeze to calm down as Ella and Gaia hugged him, what was it? I can't tell. So a primordial or higher Naruto concluded logically even if Gaia didn't confirm it, he was sure of it or else she wouldn't be affected. What is this artifact? It seems to be something of very high level, why would father give it to me? I am happy that he finally decided to talk to me personally but this feels suspicious. Would father really give such a precious item away like that? I have never heard about it and this negative feeling I am getting, is really confusing. Leo mused as he held the artifact that his father had gifted him, he felt happy and confused. He turned it around and tinkered with it but it was truly too hard just as expected and not even his flames could do anything about it. That was stupid. I was told it enhances flames so obviously flame retardant. Leo shook his head as he did something stupid and put it on. Let's just learn from experience. I should trust father as he did go out of his way to give me a gift and no enemy should be able to enter the camp. Leo reasoned as he put it on and he felt it connect with his soul but he didn't know how malicious this object was and its real function. The nymphs gathered around Naruto once they heard him scream, Alice came forth while watching his face. Is everything alright? Sorry for making a ruckus but it's okay now. Naruto said as he felt better already with Ella and Gaia's presence. Alice stared at him for a moment and nodded as she left to give him space so that he is ready to listen to their request. The smaller wind nymphs gathered around him once again and tried to make him feel better as they had know he felt fear and it was something familiar to them. Thanks Naruto said as he saw the little ones cover his body to provide him closure, he felt happy that people cared for him and it was something he liked. The sun had risen and the light shone over the park as Naruto stretched his limbs and went through fighting exercise to help him heat up and keep shape. After that he picked up the giant axe and tired to incorporate it into his move set but it was proving to be difficult as it felt really clumsy using such a large thing. Naruto it's okay you are doing well, the feeling only comes from your body which isn't used to utilizing such bulky weapons. Gaia said to encourage him, he was doing all right better than most axe users as he moved with finesse but she knew some people felt uncomfortable with new weapons. Naruto nodded and continued to try and fix the clunky parts of his move he could use the axe with either hand while he could use it with both to trick the opponents into believing it. As Naruto sat down to rest the nymph leaders gathered in front of him. Sorry for disturbing you, Champion Alice said with formal speech. It's okay. Do you need help Naruto was used to receiving requests and her presence just screamed that to him. Alice didn't show surprise at that and nodded. Yes, we have a big problem and we can't get out of it without sacrifices. Naruto perked up in attention and narrowed his eyes, how big? A dragon Alice said hopelessly as she waited for him to decline. How big is it? Naruto only thought of it as a giant lizard nothing more, he had seen worse. For the first time Alice showed an unsightly face, it was filled with surprise and followed with hope that her brethren might all survive. It is not too big as it is young but the size is approximately 20 meters, its body is 15 meters while the tail is 5 meters. Alice explained as she made the wind take shape of the dragon while Naruto looked carefully and thought how the combat might happen. Naruto, you can't defeat it. Gaia threw water over his fighting spirit and the nymph's hope. Naruto just took a breath to calm himself down, so what should I do, I can't just let them suffer. He asked expecting an answer. To him Gaia had become like Kakashi, who will provide him answers when asked. Gaia felt that he just thought of something rude but let it go and explained. With your strength and gear right now, it is highly likely you will die along with Ella or if you used the nymphs then you might survive but then many of them would be sacrificed. Naruto and the nymphs thought on it and nodded in acceptance as they couldn't see it happen without casualties now that it had been put into words. But there is a way, we can kill more monsters to gather strength and gather more gear. 
she said calmly while touching Naruto so that he won't speak, Naruto understood. Yeah, this way we can do it. How long do we have Alice? Naruto showed false bravado. Alice and her companions looked very happy and they hugged each other in joy, it should be here in two weeks but even this isn't enough for us to get away as the monsters have infested the city. She said helplessly and felt guilty to put so many burdens on a stranger, she didn't want to be like the hated Olympians. Even if you can't accomplish it without casualties we will be forever thankful and do our best to be of service, she said with dignity and honor flowing through her words which resonated with Naruto who nodded. Don't worry everything will be alright. Naruto said as he touched her hand which felt warm and he let go and walked away. Alice looked at her hand and felt surprised that she was not feeling uncomfortable from a male's touch. Naruto walked out of the park along with Ella heading towards any clothing shop. So what is it? The affect lessens as you take more, you will require higher level beings to feed on to maintain the efficacy. Unless you wish to massacre whole lot of them it is going to be slow, you can become strong but not enough to beat the dragon. Gaia said mercilessly but Naruto didn't lose hope. So I will just kill more and utilize my skills to do the rest, a dumb monster should NT be a match, he said confidently. It can fly and breathe fire she said with a dull look. So I can have Ella cut its wings with the axe while we blast it with projectiles from the ground. That could work but most likely you will die or the nymph says it will definitely throw fire in that direction. So what should I do to succeed without a sacrifice? Naruto said helplessly, he didn't like this feeling and it made him angrier that he had been deprived of his power. Gaia sat on his head and patted him, calm down, there is a sure fire way, we poison it. Poison? Where do I get one that's strong? He said in confusion. The Gorgon sisters she said with a smile Naruto could feel his mood uplifting with her tone of voice and asked, and where do I find them? Not very far and at an unexpected place. Naruto she was just dragging along, where? At the convenience store, these girls have moved with the time and found a better way to hunt. Gaia said with smile as she thought of the dumb little creatures. That was definitely not what I expected but it is smart, I would give it to them for using their brains. Naruto said as he remembered the things about the creatures and their tragedy inflicted upon them by Athena. Will you kill them? Gaia asked curiously depends, I will try talking with them first and if it works then no killing. On other hand if they decline I will kill them as they are not innocent anymore, I will get justice for them but they also deserve punishment now for killing the children who had the unlucky fate of being born to the Olympians. Gaia felt his determination and conviction, good or else you might end you might die because of you bleeding heart. I like that about you but it can get annoying so don't go that far. Haha, <laughs> I will try my best. Naruto said as he thought of the many times he had been told those words. On the way to the clothing shop Naruto killed several monsters and fed the pills to Ella who did become strong but the affect was minimal even after taking multiple pills. It had even less effect on him but something was still better than nothing, and he did get some daggers and a round shield. These things are random as some games. What did dog like a beast have to with shields? Naruto thought as he helped Ella put on sports bra and shorts but it was impossible to get them off without him there so they ditched them. I know these things are random so I wish for a pair of shorts which work mentally. Naruto said as he felt annoyed at leaving her naked on the bottom as her ass and private parts were on show, barely protected by feathers. Don't worry Naruto. Ella is happy with just this. Ella said as she looked at him with a smile. No, we will definitely find a solution but now we deal with our real problem. Naruto said without hesitation and kept his eyes away from her naked skin. Damn hormones Naruto felt really annoyed that now that he had calmed down his other instincts were working in order and it seemed they were coming at him with revenge as he had never done any sexual thing, not even that. Gaia didn't like what she was getting from Naruto so she patted his head and concentrated her ability to suppress his desires and as he was accepting of it, the affect took place. Thanks Naruto said as he took in fresh air to cool down his body. You are welcome Gaia said while holding back her annoyance she felt in her heart. Naruto walked along the path of the metropolis filled with more people than he had ever sensed and also the bad they had done to the world, he had a connection with Gaia and was a sage so he could feel it the more he walked in the city that had almost completely ruined nature. The people they didn't care and made a mess, smoke everywhere and pollution kept on increasing very second. Naruto stopped Gaia said as she felt him losing to the will of nature, her hate and suppressed desires. What is this? 
Naruto's eyes were red and still filled with inherent rage of nature as he questioned what he seen and felt. Gaia sighed sadly, this is what humans have become, and you said you will be my champion do you even know what that means? Have you thought on how you can save the world without harming the mortals as even if you heal the planet it would only be temporary? Gaia didn't like to make him stressed but he needed to know what he was getting into with clear view. We will talk later. I wish to have peace of mind while handling this problem. Naruto postponed these thoughts to not be distracted and kept his senses to the surface to avoid getting lost again. Finally after having killed some monsters that he passed by and becoming stronger Naruto arrived at his destination. He entered the store where he saw two female receptionists who smiled cordially at him in a welcoming manner. Naruto smiled back and walked towards them directly, when he heard one of them. Sister, it's another monster who wants to court us. Don't mind it and enjoy the experience Stino Uriali said haughtily. Naruto stood in front of the women and said with a friendly smile, Hello, nice to meet you. Do wish to buy anything or just talk talk, something very important. Uriali's interest was piqued as the monster was not lost in lust or anything remotely close to love seeing their beautiful appearance and he was strong, she could feel it. We are listening. I can help you get your revenge on those two people from Olympus and even heal your curses. Naruto said carefully while looking at them, any sign of attack and they had to die. Can you really? Stino said with hope and joy as she held his collar with her face close to his. Yes what do want in return? Uriali didn't know if she could believe him but it was better than nothing and the gates of death were open, they would return if they died. Your blood, the poisonous and the healing side that is very simple, I know you want more so don't dawdle. Live by my rule, no killing innocents that is all I ask, Naruto said seriously. Uriali and Stino both looked at him with surprise, what kind of monster is this? This request is simple and we can oblige by it as we won't have any reason to do such a thing. But when can you grant our wish? She asked while getting ready to strike if he was just playing around. You might think this is an excuse but I need a year at most. Naruto said cautiously getting ready to act but unexpectedly he heard them laughing, his face showed surprise. Is that all? We are immortals. One year is nothing in our eyes. I was expecting you to say at least 100 or 1000 years, then I might have attacked. You must not have lived long to see the time like mortals. Uriali slithered to his side, he didn't move as he felt no danger. So pure and you look good now that I look carefully. Do you want this big sister to give you a good time? She teased while her sister laughed with happiness after a long time of pain and despair along with rage at the world for their accursed fate. No thank you, I would like to spend time with someone I love. I don't take these things lightly, Naruto said as she looked at him teasingly. Such a nice guy. Sister would have been a happy girl if she had met you instead of that seaweed bastard. Uriali said with anger and smashed her hand against the table destroying it. Sorry, it's just remembering how our sufferings were result of his seducing our sister and the fact she has died many time already made me furious. Uriali said with embarrassment as she was the intelligent one among the sisters behind Medusa. It's okay. I understand your pain Naruto said as he touched her face to take away the tears she let out as she felt hope. You really are a nice guy. We will trust you and follow what you have said but just be sure let's all swear on the river Styx. Uriali was serious as this was a hope that she had to latch onto, they had no other choice or they would continue living the same. Okay Naruto was already planning to do that but it seems the women really were more desperate than he had believed. How did it go? Gaia asked as she was sitting on Ella's head outside the store. It went better than expected good. Now we hunt monsters to improve your strength and get any other lucky weapon while waiting for it. Yeah, let's go Ella. I will teach you how to fight with you claws. On Olympus, Zeus walked into his personal palace and sat down on his throne. He looked forward, staring hatefully at a sign which read, Sector 67. He wished he could burn it down as those words mocked him and his existence but unfortunately he held no such power. They do not understand my actions and never will. They have become too fragile like the mortal. I need power and they would never accept my means. I had lost myself in lust to numb this pain and hatred but then the world smiled upon me and gave me away. How can I resist the temptation to free myself from this slavery? How can I, Zeus be a damn slave? Zeus thought as he broke the arm rest of his throne from the pressure and touched the collar on his neck, something he could not take off for the moment and has tormented him for thousands of years. Zeus got up from the throne and walked towards the sign, 
In his hand was a dark crown. With slow movements he scraped the sign with the edges of the crown and his eyes were filled with hope as he saw scratches appear on it. Yes he exclaimed in joy as he looked at the accomplishment of a lifetime, this sign was unaffected by his powers but this crown damaged it. Unlike the other pieces the darkness piece is exceptionally pure and strong. Hades' child should be a worthy sacrifice to the crown of darkness, I would have loved to use my brothers but they aren't weak enough to not understand what was happening. Zeus thought as he walked back with a wicked smile on his face. Soon, soon, I will have my dreams come true. There shall be no more strings on me. Zeus muttered with confidence and his eyes shone with intelligence and madness. In the evening, Naruto walked back to the park filled with bruises and cuts, which was the same for Ella. The gates of death were open indeed and Naruto learned firsthand what that meant as the city was infested with the creatures who were all bloodthirsty for his life, mortals and the Demis. Even then it was very productive, we got some armor for both of us and Ella seems to pick up techniques perfectly with her eidetic memory. Naruto walked with a painful gait as he had been mauled by countless beasts and had learned the painful way to not carried away in destroying monsters or else many of them would gather to end him. Ah Ella screamed as she fell from the sky, she had insisted on carrying herself not to burden him but it seems the damage was bad. He quickly moved and caught her, even with the armor that covered her upper body below the neck she didn't weigh much. Ella, I will carry you so stop moving Naruto said gently as he looked at his new friend with worry. Ella looked at him and saw that it hurt him to see her in pain so she nodded demurely. If you had just listened and done this systematically instead of getting carried away because of the time limit, you would have been alright. It's not even that close as you still have two weeks and even if it goes down by a few days, it should be enough for you to fight the dragon. Gaia's voice entered his ears and he could feel that she was very annoyed at his recklessness. Sorry but I need to best I can do with your method I would not have gained as much. This pain is bearable but death of innocent life would haunt me forever knowing that I could I have saved them as such I cannot risk it. Those little one depend on me so I have to live up to their expectations. Naruto replied in a determined tone, he felt the innocence of the nymphs and their pain so he wished to liberate them. Gaia sighed and smiled, okay I accept that but please be careful. I do not like to see you in pain. Naruto could feel the affection in her voice and the pain she felt communicated through her words and nodded. I know you will not like this but I wonder if I died would I also be able to walk out through the gates? Naruto asked with a controlled tone while keeping his eyes away from Gaia. You can but don't ever let that happen as the place you will appear is one of the most dangerous places for you. You will appear on Tartarus who will be able to sense our connection and try to have you killed by hordes of monsters. To make it worse I won't be able to accompany you there so you won't grow stronger to fight them off. Gaia said in a serious tone hoping that day never came as Naruto would most likely perish without getting at least one of his artifacts back. Naruto felt a chill go down his spine, good to know. He said with a sigh as he had lost one more easy way to power and even gotten an actual restriction unlike other monsters. Is there any news of the Olympians? Naruto asked to change the topic. You are safe as they are being occupied by the Higantes, my other children that have opposing abilities to the Olympians, she said while looking down in shame as she wished they didn't exist anymore. Curse him, for not letting me do what I want. She really wished to curse him but was scared he might do something really bad for her and it could be anything. So that vision I had of a demi fighting was probably against one of the giants. Whose child? Zeus it should be Porphyrian. He is the king of giants that opposes Zeus. Gaia said thoughtfully knowing they would fail already as the Olympians had heroes on their side to turn the tide. He seems to be out in the wild so we can meet him first and see how it turns out after I have tamed the dragon. What? Tame the dragon, you didn't mention that. Gaia spoke with accusation in her voice. Well we need a ride or else how am I supposed to move around? I can't fly and I don't have my speed anymore. This is the only logical route obviously that is if the dragon surrenders. Naruto said as he looked at the tiny figure floating in front of him. She stared back equally with a powerful gaze and nodded as she understood. Welcome Naruto. How was your outing Alice came and greeted them at the entrance. She felt filled with hope seeing that the champion was trying his best as witnessed through his many wounds. Very productive. Though if you wouldn't mind do you guys have any fruits to eat? Naruto asked as he really wanted to taste food and the things out there were not natural he could sense impurities in them. He didn't want scavenge the whole city for just some food when he was already occupied. Alice felt happy that they could be of use and nodded, the dryads can provide you with healthy fruits as you desire, 
these can increase your vitality and heal wounds. She explained with smile on her face as she guided them towards the location. She told them to sit down while she went and brought some fruits while they were waiting Naruto put Ella down and started healing her with the remaining energy he had so that her wings don't get crippled. She moved and moaned in pain as the healing set everything right and by the time he was done, he felt completely drained. Now I understand how normal people feel, how can they even do so much with such low reserves of energy? Naruto muttered in disbelief as his new energy was truly just a drop of his real reserves. That's what strong people always ask, as they see the weak doing things through ingenuity. Gaia answered as she understood what he meant, she had also encountered such scenes before in her endless life. Naruto also knew that but he really couldn't see himself getting used to this as he always had such high reserves. He looked at Ella and smiled while messing with her beautiful hair as she rested her head on his lap and giggled when she felt his touch that made his fatigue lower seeing such a pure person. The wind nymphs had already started gathering around them and enjoyed the feeling of his energy while he healed Ella. Before they could all pounce on the blonde champion, Alice came to the rescue. Children, do not disturb them, she said in a maternal tone and they retreated while looking back with sad expressions. Sorry about that but they seem to have gotten attached to your presence. It's all right, I like it when they gather around me and it makes for a beautiful scene. Alice nodded and put down some fruits in front served on a leaf. Here are the fruits as you wished, please enjoy. Thank you Naruto said as he picked one and fed it to Ella. No problem. I wish to ask, if you would require our service in fighting the dragon Alice asked as he floated beside them and it didn't seem like she wanted to leave. Naruto took a bite out of the fruit and saw the wandering gaze of Gaia. He smiled and picked up a small treat to feed her. She opened her tiny mouth and nibbled on the treat while his hand held it, the scene was really cute and he could help but smile widely. After she had finished Gaia looked away to hide the happy face while Naruto looked towards Alice. I didn't wish to do this but yes, I would require the wind nymphs to cause trouble for the dragon in the air and the water nymphs in case of a fire so they can be ready to douse it out. I will do the rest along with Ella, he said as he his hand picked up a fruit to eat. Alice nodded thoughtfully and she hesitated before saying, can I be of assistance? The dragon is an aerial threat and you don't seem to have flight capability and it would hinder Miss Ella if she carried you. So in this case I can help provide flight capability for you. She finished her words with conviction and slight embarrassment. Naruto knew she just wanted to help as Ella would have zero problems carrying him with her increased powers, even then he still asked with curiosity, how? By combining, a nymph of high level has such a capability. I would become the armor you wear and take flight against our enemies, she said with determination while hiding her embarrassment. Haha <laughs> Gaia couldn't stop herself from laughing which made the scene awkward and out of place. Alice was lucky that she couldn't be seen clearly or else she might have felt worse. Naruto could see that it took courage to consider such things so he didn't dismiss it but inquired, can you show me how it works? He said gently while putting Ella's head down on the grass bed while standing up. Alice nodded with excitement as this ability was inherent to them and no nymph had ever done it because it was sacred and not something done with just anyone along with the requirement of affinity which Naruto passed with high marks. Naruto stood waiting for her to do the thing and she didn't disappoint as she started, the wind picked up and as she extended her hand touching Naruto her body flowed around him. As it moved it started taking shape of a wind armor that had wings on the back and crown on the head made of wind, Naruto felt warm as he was embraced by Alice. He understood why she felt self-conscious when suggesting it as her body had embraced him and he was lucky that he was wearing clothes. But it was well worth it, he felt power once again and felt that his movements had become smoother and faster. You should be able to move like the wind Alice's voice rang inside his head. Naruto nodded as he took flight and checked if he could move like before, the test was a success and he had no problem moving. His wind attacks had also received a boost making his planned method of attack easier. I should make a version of this once I get my powers back, it looks cool. Naruto landed near Ella who was looking at him with excitement just like all the other nymphs who felt more willingness to believe in him once they saw Alice give herself to Naruto. Do I have a chance now? It really should NT be difficult anymore with all our resources unless it brought back up or the parent decided to attack. Naruto nodded, you heard it Alice. With your help it became easier to do this task. As he said it Alice separated from him and he could feel that she was fatigued slightly by the fusion. She smiled happily at being of use and not having to completely rely on someone else. Does this cause you to lose energy fast? 
Alice wanted to deny it but she looked at him and knew that he already understood. Yes but we can definitely go on for an hour. She said desperately as she didn't want him to change his mind. Naruto would have preferred an alternative but it was impossible. Okay but take care of your body. Alice nodded and excused herself to rest so that she was in full health for the encounter. So why did you laugh? Naruto looked her accusingly as she almost made the poor woman cry. Nothing much, it just looked like an out-of-the-way confession Gaia said with a calm tone and smile. No such thing, Alice was just trying her best to provide assistance. Yeah, provide help she said meaningfully as she took flight and sat on the tree. A week had passed by and Naruto had grown strong, his partners had also gotten used to combat. Today he was resting for longer time as too much fighting constrained the mind. He was walking the streets of NY that were far from the monster zone when he bumped into one of the Gorgon sisters. Uriah Naruto called out as he jogged to her side, she turned around and her eyes brightened at his presence. Naruto, it's nice to see you again. I thought you would visit us but it seems you are not that interested. Uriah muttered in a teasing tone, she was quite happy at his appearance. No such thing, it's just that I am busy right now. Otherwise I love to know new people and make friends. How are you doing now? Any problems? Naruto questioned as she turned to cafe and sat down. We don't have any problems except our old ones. Life seemed to be looking up but the thought of our little sister suffering sometimes makes me just walk alone or else we don't separate. Uriah Lee muttered in a soft tone which conveyed her sadness and regret that she held deep within her heart. Don't look sad. It ruins your pretty face. Trust in me. I will help your sister. I have read enough about her to say she had good reasons to go insane so I will try to bring her sanity back. Naruto sat down beside her and touched her cheek as he said in a confident tone, she was a friend and a helper so he didn't wish to see her sad. Thank you Naruto, you are the first person in 1000 of years to have been so nice to us. It makes my heart flutter, would you take responsibility if I fell in love with you? Uriah Lee looked at him with her beautiful golden eyes as her lustrous purple hair moved with the wind. Naruto looked at the woman who stood smaller than him and smiled, I don't think I qualify for such a position but thank you for considering such a possibility. Oh, you don't seem confident now. Why is that? Uriah Lee was surprised that the man in front of her would think in such a manner for this subject when he held absolute confidence for other subjects. I don't have any experience as you know and girls don't seem to like me. In my life, I guess only one girl has ever confessed her love for me and I couldn't even reply so I don't expect girls to like me in such a manner. Naruto said in a calm tone as he remembered the fight with pain in the confession, he wished he could have remembered it earlier and maybe he could have understood what love meant. Is that so? Then understand that you are a desirable partner, don't look down on yourself as I do feel attracted to you. From your appearance to your strength and aura, especially your personality so show some confidence or you will make the people who like you feel down. Uriah Lee said as she kissed him on the cheek. It was fun talking with you but I need to leave now so see you later. She said with a smile as she left, Uriah Lee could feel the envious eyes of some others on her and she was forced to evacuate. He seems to already have some people who love him dearly but I wonder if he would accept polygamy as a solution. I wonder why she hurried away. Naruto thought as he got up and felt Gaia, his face changed naturally to a peaceful smile as she sat down on his shoulder. Is this how it feels to have family? I wish we could stay together and it feels so natural. Did you have fun, roaming outside alone? Gaia asked in a calm tone as she smiled, looking at his happy expression brought joy to her soul. It was okay but I prefer when you were with me. Naruto replied casually as he decided to head back and get ready for more hunting. Is that so? To Gaia this was the best thing she could have heard and Naruto didn't seem to be aware of the connection forming between them. Three days away from the day of battle, it was a peaceful night and the group was gathered in the park. The nymphs had said they should do something fun to liven up the atmosphere especially since it was in their nature and Naruto agreed as he was getting tired of the stifling environment. Different types of food had been gathered from the human restaurants along with drinks for Naruto and Ella. Naruto was feeling excited to see something like this as it was unique and he liked celebrations. Lights moved around the peaceful night flashing in different colors and forming exciting images while the nymphs danced to the music. He would have not enjoyed the music if he didn't understand the words but his body was created by Gaia so he knew all languages. Even if it lacks chakra, I do gain the increased connection with the world through this form and when I get back in shape my sage mode should be more powerful. Naruto thought as he moved his head to the music and enjoyed the show. 
so I got my boots on, got the right amount of leather. And I am doing me up with a black color liner and I am working my strut but I know it don't matter. All we need in this world is some love there's a thin line between the dark side and the light side baby tonight. It's a struggle, gotta rumble, trying to find it but if I had you, that would be the only thing I'd ever need. Yeah if I had you, then money fame and fortune never could compete. If I had you, life would be a party, itd be ecstasy. Yeah if I had you you why 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 you, why 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 you, why 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 you. If I had you from New York to LA getting high rock and rolling. Get a room trash it up till it's 10 in the morning. Girls in stripper heels, boys rolling in Maseratis. What they need in this world is some love there's a thin line between the wild time and a flat line baby tonight. It's a struggle got a rumble trying to find it Naruto found it really different in the dance the girls did, looked really exciting and he felt the desire to see them sing more and even join in. If I had you he sang in his mind as he couldn't stop, it was just too catchy. The others also enjoyed it and the place with happiness, especially Gaia who enjoyed the joy on Naruto's face. Come on. Naruto dance with us. The little nymphs called out as a new song picked up as they pulled him to the middle and he followed their steps with an amused smile. Oh don't you dare look back just keep your eyes on me. I said you're holding back she said shut up and dance with me. This woman is my destiny she said oh 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 shut up and dance with me. We were victims of the night the chemical, physical, kryptonite. Helpless to the base in the fading light oh we were bound to get together. Bound to get together she took my arm I don't know how it happened. We took the floor and she said oh don't you dare look back. Just keep your eyes on me I said you're holding back. She said shut up and dance with me this woman is my destiny. She said oh 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 shut up and dance with me soon Ella joined in as he got passed from nymph to nymph and finally it was Ella who was in his arms as they moved to the rhythm. Are you feeling happy? Naruto asked as he looked at her adorable face. Ella is happy, is Naruto happy with Ella? Ella replied as she stared at him, her life hand changed and the pain of the past was fading. I am very happy, you are so cute. Naruto said as he bumped Ella with his forehead and chuckled happily. Ella laughed with him and then Naruto was passed to Alice who seemed to be more visible today. I hope this is to your liking. Alice asked in a calm tone as she danced in a professional manner, a thing of the past. It is wonderful and I would love to see it again, and dance with you guys again. When I am done with my quest one am taking you guys with me so that we can all be happy together. Naruto replied in a cheerful tone. Thank you for the compliment and the little ones would also be overjoyed by your words. Alice replied as she held back her smile as she felt it was too shameless. You should lighten up more. A smile would look beautiful on your pretty face. Naruto commented naturally with no motive other than to see her happy but his words brought joy to the poor woman. I will take note of that. Alice replied as she allowed her facial expressions to lighten. See, it wasn't hard. Naruto said as was charmed by the stunning smile. I hope I am not barging in but my turn. Stino muttered from the back as she pulled Naruto to her side. Sorry, I guess I took too long but you look stunning today. Naruto said as he looked at the Gorgon sister who seemed to have dressed differently. Just for your eyes Naruto, we don't get the opportunity to do this anymore so you can say it is your lucky day. Stino said in a teasing tone. I am honored and happy that you joined in. Naruto replied as he moved with her and he seemed to be getting used to it. We wish we could join the fight as well but we would be burdens so this is the most we can do, moral support. Stino said as she felt annoyed that once again they could do nothing. It's alright and without your poison, this would be impossible. So don't look down and you can grow, just find a weapon or start magic. You have the power don't you then learn to use it to the full capacity. Naruto said as he pushed her chin up with his right hand. Do you think so? I think so. With hard work anything is possible. Thanks. We will try as you advised and maybe we can be of use after the battle. Stino replied with a smile and she took the chance to give him a kiss on the lips. That was my first and your reward for helping us. Stino said with a chuckle as she bounced away, the wrath of Gaia might be upon her if she didn't. You seem to have a way with the ladies, Naruto. Gaia commented as she stood in front of him and her arms extended so that he could take them. I am just good at making friends as all my feelings come from the heart, pure and untainted. Naruto replied as he hid his embarrassment and took his hands with his fingers as she was tiny. 
They all danced merrily and enjoyed the night with no restraints as life could end any time and to drive away the sadness and frustration. The day of hardship had arrived, now the fighters could see if what they had prepared was enough or not. This was his first battle to protect people in the background so he was slightly nervous. Naruto sat on the grass in a lotus pose as he meditated to calm his nerves. No need to be so bunched up, we are ready for it Gaia encouraged him as seeing him so act weak didn't sit well with her. You should act with confidence like usual or else it will spread to everyone she whispered into his ear and he opened his eyes that were clear of doubt. Thanks, it's a first so it had me worried. Naruto said as he got up and stretched his limbs. It was still very early in the morning but everyone was tense as today they might be seeing each other for the last time. All their eyes were focused on Naruto, their hope and savior. If he failed most of them would be killed without resistance but as they watched him show his usual charismatic smile they felt their stress lower. Come on, don't be down. The dumb dragon won't know what hit it when the Uzumaki gets a drop on him. Naruto shouted in a cheerful voice. Alice and I will combine to fight it. There is no way it can win so cheer up and show me those smiles, make the world a bright place. Naruto said as he moved along and using of his energy to help them react as it made them feel better in its presence. To not let down their champion, the nymphs gathered around in him, and chanted victory slogans. Naruto felt a lot better after saying those words and seeing the nymphs backing him up. Naruto. Everything is ready Alice voice came from behind. Naruto turned around and took in her appearance that had solidified a bit more as she had also eaten pills which strengthened a powers a bit which was enough to make the wind around her strong enough to make her features clearly visible. Good. Let's move out to our positions. We need to take it down away from the park. Naruto said as he started walking. Yes. I have commanded the wind nymphs to cause difficulty for its flight while the water nymphs are around the lakes to stop any fire. It should fall without any problem with the planned surprise attack. Alice was full of confidence as she had fused with Naruto 30 times by now and she felt invincible together. I hope it isn't very powerful as even on ground it will be a difficult battle to occupy it until the poison does its job. Healing powers can be really annoying when they are helping your enemies. Naruto said laughingly. We will definitely be victorious. The little one's support will make us stronger while it is only alone. She insisted with a confident tone. Don't let that power get to your head or you might mistakes Gaia advised as she saw that Alice had gotten drunk on the power after being a weak existence for so long. Sorry, if I sounded too arrogant Alice said as she came to reality and understood that he attitude might have been affected a bit too much. No worries it happens to everyone, even I had felt like that more than once. Naruto smiled at her to make her feel less uncomfortable. Ella, are you ready? Naruto said as he saw her perched on the tree. She flew towards him and landed, Ella is ready for combat, so Naruto has no need to be stressed. Naruto rubbed his head in embarrassment as even Ella had felt his unease at the start of the day. Good, once we are done I will reward you for the achievement. Ella looks forward to it she said as she took off to her position. It's coming a voice transferred to his ears Naruto was sitting in wait for the dragon's arrival along with Alice, once he heard the signal he fused with Alice. The power flowed through him waiting for release and when he saw the dragon in the sky, he let go. Like an arrow from the bow, Naruto pierced through the dragon's left wing with very low resistance. He had focused the wind into rotating around his body so it created huge holes in the wing without the dragon having a chance to react, it flailed its wings while roaring in pain. As it was occupied Naruto didn't let off and attacked from the front hitting its head distracting him. It fell down without much problem as it decided it was the best choice, Ella took the opportunity to slash the on the wounds created by the fall and by Naruto. Her claws had been smeared with gorgon poison, good job Ella Naruto's voice was carried to her by the wind. Now that foe had been grounded it was only a matter of time before it succumbed to the poison but the hard part had just started. Keeping it occupied Naruto equipped with two axes that were too large for his hands rushed in, moving erratically like a fly. He attacked the dragon with the axes enhanced with wind power while also launching wind blast from different angles. The body of the dragon was hard and it was big, approximately 30 meters from tail to head. It roared in fury and launched a fire breath as it opened its mouth to do so. Naruto rushed in quickly kicking it with full force while being supported by the wind. This caused its maw to shift up from the impact causing some of the flames to be left inside while the rest was harmlessly in the sky. Ella followed it by cutting it on the eye. This caused it to go berserk and move around wildly trying to hit them. 
Naruto could see the wounds heal as they caused more, he took the chance and moved in with full speed with both axes at the ready he slashed its throat. The attack cut through its magic-resistant scales and made it bleed, it screeched in pain and flapped its useless wings to make them give space. Fucking pests, you will pay for this insult. Making me do something so humiliating the dragon thought as it turned into a human with scaled hands, legs and a tail. Be honored that you came this far it shouted at them as it rushed towards Ella but luckily she avoided the hit but her right wing was busted. She screamed in pain as she tried to fly away with her left. The dragon was about to follow through but Naruto intercepted it and slashed down with his axes causing it to block, it used its tail to attack from the side. Naruto had his armor activated so an attack of such low force was unable to break through it, interesting. It muttered as Naruto saw flames boiling inside its mouth, he quickly let go and jumped up supported with the power of wind. The dragon breathed fire straight making the trees burn while following the direction where Ella had moved to, which forced Naruto rush forth. Damn lizard bastard Naruto screamed as he stood in front of the blast using the wind to disperse the flames to the sides but even then his hands felt like they had been burned along with his arms. The nymphs were hard at work dousing the flames and wind nymphs providing support to his power, the wind came from the back and Naruto charged forth. The dragon had definitely become human to reduce the area of impact but it didn't know how to fight like one so it was quite easy for him to dodge its flailing and punch its face with wind charged fist. Boom the dragon was blasted sideways as it lost some teeth and the face gained cuts from the impact, he didn't let go and followed it up with an axe kick over the disoriented form of the dragon causing it to be embedded into the ground. The poison seems to be working its magic faster as it turned into human shaped being. Stupid lizard, it sucks to be you. Naruto thought as he took a heavy breath as the transformation took a lot of his stamina. Naruto walked in closer and sat on its body, and started punching him hard over and over so that the damage will accumulate and it is too disoriented to continue resisting. I know you can feel it the poison inside you, it's gorgon poison so if you think that you will get rid of it by dying you are really naive. Naruto muttered with killing intent. The dragon had gained back its consciousness from the pummeling and gritted its teeth. Showing resistance is pointless, the pain will continue increasing and even when you die it will follow you unless you get the antidote. It wanted to resist but the pain was becoming unbearable and death was getting closer, what do you want? I will kill you for this, no matter what I want you to serve me as I need a mount. Preposterous, did you forget the poison? The dragon struggled with its pride and agreed, I accept. That's not enough swear on the sticks Naruto said with a smile as he had already won. Fine the dragon swore and Naruto gave the antidote which already started taking affect but made sure the dragon was in human form otherwise it would take time. You are lucky to serve me as if I am happy with your service you will get rewards beyond your wildest dreams. Naruto said confidently as he hid his fatigue. The dragon sat down to rest and heal from all the damage while thinking, like I would believe some unknown being, Master Porphyrian is the one who can grant our wish as he has the power. You will die soon anyway. So what's your name? Albion that's a nice name I guess Naruto said as he walked away from him towards Ella who was being looked after by the dryads. You did well Ella, rest for now. Naruto said as he poured some of his power into her to heal the damage. Ella did good, he he she smiled with drowsiness as she fell asleep from the fatigue and blood loss. Naruto also fell to the ground as he let the fusion go, Alice collapsed in front of him unconscious as she had to absorb a lot of damage. That was very much unexpected. I don't remember dragons taking on humanoid forms. Things have started to change without my knowledge Gaia said as she sat on his head and sounded really sorry that she had not provided such info. Naruto couldn't muster enough strength to even assure her as his stamina was too taxed and he lay on the ground trying to gather his strength back but he did he look at her with meaning. I don't blame you as it happens to everyone Gaia understood his gaze. You are sweet even when you are falling apart but you can be proud now as you are dragon rider which is higher title than slayer. She flew to his face and kissed him on the cheeks, you have done well my champion. Now is the time to rest so let it go. She murmured gently which caused his already heavy eyelids to close and Gaia took her post, sitting on his chest. The nymphs were hard at work clearing up the damage and healing the fighters while they rested. Gaia would have continued to watch over them but she felt the dragon was real suspicious so she flew over to him. Albion, are there more of your kind in the region or will they come if you are not back? She said in a cold voice. 
Albion opened his serpentine eyes glaring at the pathetic creature but his instincts warned him along with the conditions set by Naruto which compelled him to comply with her wishes. He gritted his teeth as cursed that one of them was really observant and not too tired, yes, there are three more of my kind and they would come check this place if they sense me here. What was the point of attacking the nymphs? They are the ones who served the Olympians and all who do so need to die by the command of my master. I advise you to stop trying to be smart, Naruto is a being beyond your comprehension she warned as she flew towards Naruto to wake him up. You have gone too far Porphyrian, I will not save you again anymore. You all have let me down too many times and it is time for me to clean up the mess. Naruto lay on the ground peacefully but his dream was out of the ordinary once again. In the dream world Naruto floated in the sky as he saw an old traditional city enter his sight, he seemed to move towards the center of the city where the largest building was located. There to his astonishment, Naruto saw Kaguya sitting in the garden while behind her he could see maids taking care of two children. She looked so different and gave of the feeling that she was kind and generous. Then what happened? As he looked on with curiosity, Kaguya who seemed to be lost in thought as her face was scrunched up in concentration. She seemed to be worried and didn't seem to find what she wanted. She looked into the distance and sighed with her hand on her forehead, how do I fight against the clan? I don't know when they might found about this place? Her tone was filled with worry and frustration but as he watched she suddenly looked up and fear could be felt from her. She looked around with her opened and power operating, no, I will not comply. She seemed to be answering someone through gritted teeth. Someone has power to influence her mind and she is resisting. Naruto felt like he was at the point of truth as he saw that she fell to the ground holding her head followed with painful groans. I will kill you all. No body touches what is mine. Naruto heard her scream but he could sense madness had taken place inside her mind. Suddenly she directly looked towards him, no one. Her hand was about to move and he felt danger but fortunately he woke up thanks to Gia. Huff, huff he breathed heavily trying to calm down his nerves. That was too dangerous. Damn these visions might end up killing me someday. Gia looked at him with worry as he seemed really relieved to have woken up. What did he see? Curses, now I have to tell him of another worrying detail. Are you okay? She said in worrying tone Naruto looked at Gia with his mood calmed from the fright and smiled, no worries, just a nightmare. He didn't want her to blame herself for it so he didn't want to talk about it and he didn't need her input in this as it had everything to do with his own world. Gia looked at him with suspicion but kept herself from pushing him, okay, I want ask. I believe you will share it if necessary. Thanks for understanding that's fine but we have got a problem. There are other dragons and they most likely would come around to check for Albion so we can't stay here anymore. Naruto didn't let this information get to his head and nodded while contemplating his actions, it's not a problem, we were already planning to leave so we can just go today. Ah Gia just seemed to have realized that they were intending to actually protect the place but the nymphs and they would have left most likely in a week. I am letting my annoyance and disgust affects my mind she thought as she sat down on his shoulder. Naruto felt like laughing somewhat as even Gia could react like that but kept it to himself while he called out to the nymph leaders. Yes, how can we help the water nymph asked with respect in her voice. We need to leave as other dragons might be coming sometime later to find Albion. I will have Albion make noise out of the city and leave clues so they won't come this way. I enjoyed your reception but this goodbye for a time. Naruto said in slow and gentle manner as he did enjoy their presence. The nymphs felt bad as their savior was being forced into this situation because of them and they were powerless to help. Is there anything we can do to help? Just some fruits for now and you can provide me information later when I come by. Naruto said as he got and walked towards Ella. The nymph nodded and she went to her friend to gather the best fruits for them to enjoy on their journey. They ended up gathering a large amount which filled up two bags. Naruto looked down on Ella's unconscious body and saw the damage done, she needs rest. He decided not to wake her up and walked towards Albion. Get ready to leave. I hope you will change sooner or later. Naruto muttered while holding back his annoyance at the backstabbing lizard. HMPH Albion harumped and transformed back to his original form which had healed from its injuries and only some marks were left. As Albion walked behind him, Naruto went towards Ella once again and picked her up. She was light so there was no problem carrying her, his inadvertently went towards Alice. She was sleeping as she had expanded more energy than anyone, he wanted to bring her along as she was really helpful but he knew she had her own life. I can't bring others into my problem. 
he thought as he walked towards Albion as the little wind nymphs circled him crying and begging for him to stay. They were really cute little creatures and with their tiny amount of strength they all held onto him to stop him from mounting Albion. This experience made him feel touched but also encouraged him to leave faster. Calm down. Little friends we will meet again. I am not leaving forever. Naruto said with a smile to cool them down but they were children so they did not understand the situation. Naruto had to be rescued by the leaders as they brought along a big bag filled with good stuff. Don't disturb the champion, little ones the water nymph said as she had the older nymphs get them away. Naruto didn't like the look of sadness on their faces but he ignored as it was best for them and looked at the leaders. We are sorry that you have to suffer all this because of us. We will never forget this favor and help whenever possible. You are my friends and I do not like seeing good people get hurt so need for thanks. Nymph felt a lot better after hearing his friendly and humble opinion, so she nodded to her friend beside her who brought Alice. Please take her along, we can continue without her and she wanted to help you as much as possible. This is her desire so please grant us this request and it can make it easy to provide information to you through Alice. The water nymph said in a begging tone. Naruto wanted to deny but he could feel that she was not lying and everything was genuine. As he was struggling with the choice, Gia gave her own opinion, you should take her along. With her help we can finish the quest at a faster rate with lower difficulty. Naruto looked at Alice and remembered the feeling he had when they combined, they were compatible and there was low resistance. Okay but if there is much danger I will send her away. Naruto said with a sigh as he remembered that Ella was also in the same situation. With the gang on his body, Albion took flight and as instructed when he had had arrived out of the city he roared to make the monsters remember his presence. He moved faster and as passing by some mountains he blew flames on it and smashed it with his tail. Good enough Albion loud voice rang that's enough Naruto shouted. So where are we going Naruto thought a bit before responding, camp half blood. I still haven't seen what kind people are they so what better place than their base. Albion was confused why this being would want to go there, is he working with the Demis? Doesn't matter, I will definitely be free. As Albion started flying towards their destination Gia wondered what his decision would be after seeing the children. Hope he does not hesitate when the time comes, the children might be sad little existences but they made their choices. The destination was three days worth of journey from the place they took off from. As Albion had shown signs of weakening Naruto had him land in an appropriate place, where it was good enough place for them to rest. Even he was still tired and needed to rest or else he might have fallen off the dragon's back. Naruto climbed off Albion's back as he landed and carried Ella along with Alice, placing them on the ground in comfortable positions so they didn't wake up. I will be going to sleep, you can rest as well Naruto said as he lay on the ground beside Ella. Albion looked at him and turned away to sleep away from the gang, he didn't think of them as friends just enemies that would die soon. Sai Naruto realized that people don't just change so easily with one conversation. I can't let my victories get to my head Naruto reprimanded himself. Go to sleep, Naruto. I will watch over everything Gia said as she was sat on his chest. Thanks and good night Naruto yawned as he said the words and fatigue overtook him, making him fall asleep within minutes. The next morning, Naruto awoke to find that he was the last one to get up. There was no water source nearby to clean up so he had to do without. He walked to join the others who were sitting nearby, both the fighters looked healthy and Albion sitting in the distance also looked to have recovered completely. Good morning he said as the others responded in kind. He sat down and Alice was the focus of his attention, you must have heard about what happened so do you wish to accompany us or you want to leave? I wish to join your quest and this is not just from a sense of obligation but because I want to be with you. Alice said with a determined tone. I am happy that you are joining us, as your help is valuable and I like you as well. Naruto said with a smile. That had taken a lot of courage for Alice to say those words so she felt deflated inside and couldn't muster up anything else after she realized that Naruto didn't understand what she just said. He is too damn dense, does he only know of one like Alice wanted to shout but that would be out of character. On the other hand Gia was covering her mouth to stop from laughing at the scene, he never fails to put a smile on my face. Ella you have done well, so what do wish to have as a reward? Naruto didn't notice the girl's reactions and turned to Ella had an eager expression. She jumped up and with a wide smile she spoke, Ella wants a kiss. She said directly, with the increase in power her wisdom had increased and just from the situation she realized Naruto would only understand with a direct approach. 
Naruto felt embarrassed and overly conscious of her appearance once she said those words, with flustered tone he muttered, you should do that with someone you like. Ella like Naruto she said with a clear gaze, staring into his eyes so that he couldn't look away from her powerful eyes. What do I do? I promised and breaking promises goes against my code but I don't love her. How can I lead her on? Naruto seemed lost in thought thinking of these things when he felt a soft touch on his lips, it was amateurish but still filled with love. Naruto started ahead into Ella's eyes as she continued to mash her lips with his, he was too shocked to act and let her play with him. Only after two minutes did she separate, it didn't taste like anything the book described, Ella is confused. Naruto felt like laughing that the first words she would say after doing such a thing was about the taste of the kiss not being like a book's description. While Alice felt defeated that a younger girl had just done more than her and Gia didn't understand what she feeling, it was a dark desire she hadn't felt for so long. Am I feeling jealous? You don't need to think so hard, as you will definitely love Ella. Ella guarantees, she said as she concentrated on the subject at hand. Naruto didn't want to disrespect her belief and resolve so he decided not to deny her the opportunity, he didn't love anyone more than a friend so he really didn't have any reason to deny her a chance. Okay he nodded as he came to an understanding with himself. Then one more she said as she tried to latch onto him. No Naruto and Alice both said while Alice reacted faster as she watching Ella's movement very closely and jumped her before she could mount Naruto. Albion felt more and more confused as he watched them. What kind of being is he? Is that really his true form? He said he would make me stronger than I could fathom. What does that imply? Was he bluffing? Naruto talked for a while and did warm up exercises before they continued the journey. On the third day, as they were just hours from their destination, Alice sensed something. Enemies incoming, it's a dragon. No, three dragons. She shouted in worry as her voice was carried to the others clearly. Albion smiled in victory, brothers come and free me from this disgraceful state. Naruto connected his senses with the wind and shot out lightning bolts toward the dragons but they were too strong for it and his elemental power was weak. It only singed their skin slightly and they roared in delight, as they could see their prey. Albion dived down and zigzagged through the buildings Naruto commanded. Albion wished that he didn't have to but the covenant forced him as he dived down with full speed and did as he was told. The dragons followed while one still stayed up, as they passed by between two buildings Naruto quickly threw the two spiked chains connecting both buildings. Using the wind he created a strong gust and Alice supported him in the act so when the dragons took the turn they collided with chains causing destruction to the buildings. Oh shit. Naruto just realized what he'd done on instinct. Naruto quickly concentrated on the falling debris and the chains, while he had Albion fly in place as he held the things up. The chains coiled up the falling dragons that couldn't get a chance to fly within a short space and their bodies kept on colliding with each other. The chains coiled around them their legs while the other part was attached to Albion who was raging within at what was transpiring. Sorry Albion but you have to suffer through this, fly faster towards. That direction Gia completed for him as he didn't know how to quickly get rid of the burden. Albion with difficulty was forced to carry his fellows towards a construction site, where he rammed them into the incomplete structure making the tons of concrete and steel beams fall on their bodies. Naruto made sure they wouldn't get out by manipulating the steel to entangle them and bash them with the wrecking ball. They heard a roar of outrage from behind as huge flame came towards them. Albion, it seems your friends don't really care for you safety. Blast him. Curse you damned being Albion regretted his choices as he breathed flames towards his brother but his was smaller. Naruto and Alice took action. With their wind powers the flames were fanned towards the enemy causing it harm. The dragon took damage and staggered. Naruto quickly utilized the metal around him and threw them like spears causing them to rip through its wings. Let's go Naruto said as he captured the other dragon but it was too dangerous as they had made too much noise. If you had been good, it wouldn't have come to this Naruto muttered to Albion who just roared in response, letting out his frustration and anger. After the long-winded battle and some more hours of travel, they finally arrived in the area where Camp Half-Blood was located. Naruto could see the buildings and people from the sky. Naruto, there is a barrier protecting the place. Unless you want to fight the Olympians don't touch it. Gia warned him as he might just enter the place. Hearing her warning, Naruto crossed out his plan to enter and observe from inside. Now the only thing I can do is observe from afar. Luckily the place is open and there are not many buildings so nothing to block the view. 
Naruto thought as he had Albion land miles away from the camp as he did not want them to be alarmed about their presence. How long do you plan to stay here? Gia asked as she sat on his shoulder. Naruto looked ahead and replied calmly, it should nt be long but I wish to know of them before making a judgment, soon I will have to face them. Remember your life is more important and they have made their choices when they accepted their immortal parents. She warned him once again so that he would not forget, she knew he was too nice of a person and it worried her that he might do something selfless. Don't worry. Even I wouldn't go that far. Naruto said laughingly as he rubbed her tiny head and started walking to a location from where he could see the camp. Albion you did well so relax and take a rest, I will definitely rewards you for this service. Naruto said with a smile which angered the golden dragon and if it could, it would have pounced him. Gur Albion growled as he turned away fucking bastard, you will, damn, damn Albion was so angry that he couldn't even think right, his wings flapped and he disappeared into the distance. Ah. The dragon was being so grumpy even though Naruto was so nice. Ella said in confusion. It happens. He is just cross that his friends were fighting us. Naruto said gently as he avoided getting too close to Ella. Her nakedness stood out more and more each moment. He had to make conscious effort to keep his eyes of her beautiful form, that juicy ass which was hardly covered as they still hadn't found magical pants for her or found a way to change her arms to human type. Alice was frustrated watching Ella attract his attention so to distract him away from it and show her usefulness she spoke up, Naruto, there is a much more effective method to know about the camp. How? Naruto asked as he looked to his left with attention. I can summon the wind nymphs from the camp to deliver us the information. They are more loyal to me than they would to the Olympians. They only live inside because it's the safest place for them even if it means giving up your dignity. Alice said with a neutral holding back her rage at the memories of her comrades killing themselves after the abuse. Don't worry, they will pay. Naruto said as he hugged Alice, she was surprised but happy and enjoyed the unexpected gift. Please summon them, I wish to know Naruto muttered into her ear. M. Alice hummed as she separated and turned around quickly, she concentrated on her powers and spread her hands. A wind spread from her and an audible sound was transmitted, which only the wind nymphs heard. As they stood there for few minutes, they saw few wind nymphs flying towards them. They don't seem to be abused, has the situation changed from Alice's time Naruto thought seeing the expression on their faces as they didn't seem to be unhappy. How may we be of service mistress the nymph at the head asked. I want you to answer to the commands of Naruto Alice said as she pointed to him. Very well, master what is your command? Relax, I wish to know of your treatment inside the camp. It used to be hard some years back but since the young hero Percy Jackson made a request to right the wrongs from the Olympians instead of immortality our life has been really good. We just have to work now and don't have to worry too much about being attacked by lust driven immortals. The nymph said dreamily. But the attacks still happen. Gia interjected the nymph's head dropped and she nodded, it's improving as it is 100% better than before. Naruto decided to change the subject as it made him feel uncomfortable talking about such subjects, how are the Demi children? Are they similar to their parents? No, most of them are scared and the camp is the only place they live peacefully. Only rarely some of them go insane and cause massive damage but they are just really sad little pups who can't even live longer than 20 years. Is that so? Would they give their lives to save their parents or avenge them? Naruto asked curiously. I don't know the nymph said in shock is this guy trying to say he will kill the Olympians? Is there a way for me to watch what's happening inside? Naruto decided on his final request. It is possible, do you wish to start now? Yes. The nymph nodded and seemed to be talking with the others still inside the barrier, and then suddenly a water basin was created through which they could see inside the camp. This will show what the water nymph inside the camp is seeing, she explained. Naruto nodded and thanked her as he looked inside while Gia just shook her head at his defenselessness, did he not realize he just told them he was going to kill the Olympians? Why do you have to be so careless my lovely Naruto? Naruto gazed at the mirror and the inside of the camp could be seen, he saw teenagers going about their things. Training to fight he thought as he saw them using the weapons. The scene changed and he could see girls doing nothing much useful. It changed once again and he could see buffed up fighters, leading them was a girl. The scene changed to teens playing around with gadgets and he could see the horseman, Chiron the trainer of heroes. They seem to be having fun just like normal kids, it's really a sad thing they have to suffer for someone else. 
The training really is too childish, is he even trying to help them? Why is he so careless with their lives? Why can't they use these modern weapons instead of such outdated things? Unlike our kind who has very high physical capabilities and jutsus, these demi children don't. Naruto thought as his face was scrunched up with concentration and annoyance as he could think of this, but their parent never bothered with it. Why don't they use the modern firearms instead? He questioned out loud, hoping for a reasonable answer so he could at least not completely lose hope in his new enemies. Oh, Gia was just flabbergasted as even she hadn't thought of it. I don't know, it might be because they think it is honorable and shows real skills and manliness, she provided some half assed answer. They really don't care do they Naruto's picture of them fell even more, in his eyes this was worse than killing him. How many of their children could have survived, if they had just given them such weapons or better if they just undid their sins? Smile Naruto. Ella doesn't like it when your face becomes like that. It is scary. Ella said as she touched his head with hers. Sorry. I will try not to Naruto said with a gentle smile as his hand pinched her cheeks which made her smile happily. He he Ella giggled into his touch on the other hand the nymphs were shocked as to why the demi children hadn't thought of such a simple thing. Couldn't the blacksmith's sons do such an easy job instead of creating those useless toys? They were confused as to why anyone hadn't suggested it. Naruto and Ko stayed there for two days as they watched the ongoings in the camp, the nymphs provided commentary and he learned the tells of the past which made him angry and sad. So many human lives destroyed that tragic little girl Naruto thought as he gazed towards the big house where Rachel resided. Why couldn't you have done anything, Hermes? You destroyed your son's life and the mother as well. Naruto felt so angry and frustrated as his fist was bleeding from the pressure, he felt the gentle touch of others which relaxed his emotional state. Sorry, I can get really emotional sometimes. These incidents were so avoidable if they had just tried. You were right. I will end them as planned. They have lost the right to exist. Even my limits have been breached. Once I gather my power, I will erase everything wrong in this world. It will be a pure world. Naruto spoke slowly but as he spoke his gaze showed madness. Relax Naruto. Don't connect to the world Gia said as she bopped him and he stared at her with such a foreign look that it hurt her inside. Wake up Naruto, you are being scary Ella shouted as she hugged him. Eliminate the outsiders, my loyal subjects Naruto heard a voice inside his head which had worked together with the corruption of the world to make him react in such a negative manner but with the help of their voice he surfaced from the dark bog. Huff. Huff Naruto breathed hard as he saw scenes of utter destruction, worlds getting destroyed and the desire to do the same on this world still lingered inside the deepest part of his heart. Are you okay? Gia asked with worry, she had seen a complete monster when he gazed at her. It rang alarm bells inside her head, what was that, how can something make me feel threatened? Huff, I am okay. I don't what got over me to connect with the world. Naruto said with painful breaths, he was horrified at what could have happened. Let's just sleep for now, it might help. We got to leave tomorrow. Gia suggested as she thought of how to help him. Naruto nodded and just collapsed to the ground, like his strings had been cut he was feeling weak after the outburst. Thanks Ella he muttered meekly as she slept with him and on the other side he felt Alice engulf him in her presence, which helped him relax along with the pure natural energy. It wasn't long as he departed from the world of the conscious. In his sleep, Naruto was once again in a dream where he was a spectator. What is it this time? Naruto questioned with annoyance clear in his voice, he was so very tired. Can't you give me a break? He complained but his gaze was clear to not miss any details, he saw the scenery become clear and he could tell it was his world. Suddenly the voice that commanded him rang and he could sense tremendous change in the atmosphere. Two green beams pierced the sky. One was from the planet while the other came from the moon. He heard a roar of indignation and hatred from the planet followed by the figure he had seen before, the green form had darkened and it directed its hand towards a direction as energy gathered but at the last moment it crushed the move with its hand causing a misfire. The figure was covered in it and he could see no more. Who was that? What happened to the other? Damn, these visions are making me more worried than ever, I need to get back quickly or I might not see the world anymore. He thought as worry seems to surface from the things he had been seeing which forecasted a tragic future. Suddenly the scene changed, he felt like he was falling endlessly and feeling despair along with deep rage like never. It caused him pain at there being no outlet and with a fright he woke up, the sun had still an hour to rise. 
Naruto felt his body drenched in sweat as he felt the warmth from the girls calming his nerves and a smile took place on his face. There is no need to worry. I will face the problems as they come. Worrying won't make them disappear so wasting energy on it is a wrong choice. Relax and fight it lie usual. I thought I might need to help you but it seems you are okay. It s good that you have recovered, you feel different than before. Gia said as she landed on his head. Thanks. I just let the feelings of worry depart. It really makes you feel so different. Naruto said gently as he got up slowly after gently removing the girls. I can see that. So what had you wake up with such fright? She asked curiously as she believed they had enough time together to ask. I saw danger heading for my home. I need to return to fight once again. Naruto said as he smiled, he felt comfortable with Gia to share his mind. She really is special. I have never felt such before. I don't wish to her leave my side Naruto felt his thoughts head in such a weird direction, that he had stop himself before he became too conscious of her presence. Let's go Naruto said to Albion who had kind of learned his lesson and without a word took flight. Hope he learns or else we might have to cut him loose some way. He thought as he stared at the changing scenery ignoring the woman stuck to him. So you have finally decided to take back a fragment Gia said cryptically without specifying as Albion might have a method. Yes, I think I need to finish this fast. Time was not a concern before but now it is limited. He replied with a clam demeanor bracing for the incoming event. Be careful Gia said even though she wanted to ask, will you kill them if they give no other option? But held back so as to not disturb his mind. Hopefully he doesn't hold back, it is already dangerous but once he starts the operation he would be in their sight. Gia felt worried for this upcoming battle. She flew from his shoulder to Alice and connected to her mind so that Naruto won't hear, Alice, I want you to do your best to eliminate any threat that harms Naruto even if he resists. You need to do this or else he might get hurt. Her voice conveyed the seriousness and danger she felt. Understood mistress, I will do my best to protect him even if I have to give my life. Alice said with conviction. Good, you will definitely be rewarded for your service. Gia finished her talk and flew back to Naruto. She skipped Ella as she would tell Naruto. I wish I could hunt more but I have caused too much commotion already to be ignored. Naruto thought as he felt an opportunity was lost with this dragon fiasco. It's okay, I don't regret my decision. I will never give up so such a setback is nothing. Naruto felt self-assured in his inner zone and was relaxed like he was about to visit a park. After an hour, Alice called out, I can sense a disturbance in the air and I believe it's the storm spirits. They are enemies be careful Gia warned as she knew they were created from Typhon. Naruto heeded the warning, Albion turn around and blast them with your flames. He was not worried as he didn't believe any enemy could take the combined attack of the three of them. As Albion turned around and flew in place, Naruto could see the horse-shaped cloudy things approaching them and they shot lightning bolts at them which hit Albion but it didn't do much with his resistance. Roar Albion was beyond furious at the pain and all the frustration was brought forth, he unleashed the strongest flames in his life. Be careful Gia screamed as Naruto felt a cold presence as it entered his body. An idolon, unfortunately I am not a good target he smiled as he poured his energy into Albion to save him from being possesses as his mind was weak at the moment. The thing didn't survive being in the presence of his energy as it was the opposite, representing light and hope to their shadowy existence. The battle ended as quickly as it started with Naruto taking prisoner the surviving storm spirit, with his elemental control he compressed it and suppressed it. Is there a way to tame this being? Naruto asked you can conquer it with your elemental powers, just keep influencing it with your lightning and wind powers and it should give in. She answered while looking at the hurt Ventus. Awesome, I get a lightning partner. Naruto smiled and was much more confident as his opponent used the power of lightning. It seems that my son has already found about Naruto and has deemed him worthy to be a threat. These were here to scout and gather information, fortunately Naruto is resistant against such means or else this would not be good. The remaining journey was calm while Albion felt thankful to Naruto saving him from becoming a puppet, he didn't say anything as the hate overpowered that sentiment. I will at least be a bit more merciful he thought as he planned his future attempts at freedom and vengeance. Naruto and the group flew to Mount Diablo where Gia said his target Jason Grace should be, they could see an army of monsters on the mountain while lightning flashed. Naruto observed the situation and he could see a human who was in the mouth of an abomination. Give up Olympian filth or else the human dies. 
The giant screamed at the fighters killing his subordinates with ease. Piper felt guilty and worried now, she could see her father was close to death as their plan had been bust since the giant had kept a literal army at his disposal. Don't worry we can do this Jason assured her with full confidence as he pulled more power from the necklace. Thanks father for this wonderful gift I am going to save the man Naruto said as he couldn't overlook the situation. Are you sure? We can just snatch it away while he is distracted? Gia asked. No, that will get them killed and I can't let that happen. No one dies on my watch. Albion charge Naruto ordered as he combined with Alice and rushed forth at full speed and causing a strong wind to carry the man out of the monster's mouth before the command could be given. An advantage of mindless drones he thought with a smile as he snatched the man away while Jason who had been clad in lightning also flashed by the monster's mouth after Naruto. Who is that? Why does he feel familiar? Jason mused but he decided to attack the giant first as the person hadn't shown to be an enemy. With the help of Naruto and his gang along with the Jason's new abilities the fight was finished quickly with their victory. Thank you for saving my father Piper said in gratitude. No problem. I can't let innocents die on my watch. He said with a smile as he turned to Jason. Dude you are so cool and you even have dragon. Leo was showing his excitement while holding back the lines he wanted to say about the girls as he felt it was not appropriate. Thanks, I also think the dragon looks cool. Now I wish you won't be alarmed, I was not just passing by but came here for you. Naruto said in a calm tone. Who are you and why do I feel a familiarity to you? Jason asked. My name is Naruto and you feel familiarity to me because that necklace is mine. I would appreciate if you returned it as I need it back. How can I be sure it is yours? This was given to me by father, are you saying he is a thief? Jason felt suspicious. He is a thief, that is my power and it was stolen from my body. Please do not make it hard. Piper and Leo looked Jason waiting for his decision. They would support what he chose. I am sorry but I can't comply with that request. Jason said as he blasted lightning towards Naruto, you filthy beast trying to trick me he screamed as he had just been informed by his father that Naruto was one of the sons of Gia the Mad Queen. Naruto had felt the danger before it got to him and dodged the attack by backing away. The battleground that had just settled down was once again filled with conflict as Albion fought Festus and Ella fought the other two. Naruto focused on Jason, I know your father told you something but please listen to me, he is lying can't you tell from the feeling. Do you really trust a father who has never been there for you? He said helplessly, this fight was one he never wished for as he felt it would end with their deaths. Shut up, your lies won't work. You just come out of nowhere and expect me to believe you, do you think I am an idiot? Jason said as his form was clad in lightning strengthening him completely allowing even flight. Naruto stop holding back, he is lost and won't listen. You promised to be careful Gia's words rang in his head. Naruto looked at his opponent and finally decided it was time to act as Jason had given up his chance. Sorry for this he muttered as he dodged the charge and slash while responding with wind-clad fist to Jason's ribs but the armor increase in power causing damage to him. Jason didn't let that opportunity go and kicked Naruto which Alice intercepted with her wind armor, reducing the affect but Naruto still felt the shock. He is pulling more and more power from the necklace. I need to end this quickly or else he might grow out of reach. Naruto felt the threat was real now and he needed to finish it, sorry but even if you have to die I will take it back, my people need me. Naruto thought as he pulled in more power as his thoughts resonated with Alice, eliminate the threat. With his mind set Naruto created multiple wind spears that bombarded Jason while he charged in with his axe while being hidden by the dust storm. You can't hide from me Jason said as his lightning flashed in all directions and he felt Naruto's presence through the electric tendrils and blocked the attack with his blade. Heavy, he is strong. Jason thought as he commanded the lightning to electrocute Naruto while the wind the resisted his attempts. The teens clashed and were stick in place with one sinking into the ground while one above putting pressure. I am sinking Jason realized as his sight changed and he could feel his feet constrained. I can't lose this, my friend's life depends on me Jason used it to motivate himself to take the risk. Give me more. More he shouted with desire as lightning flashed in his eyes causing Naruto's eyes to widen in disbelief as he was blasted away by lightning beam from Jason's mouth. Ughh Naruto groaned in pain as he felt his body get paralyzed and burnt, fortunately he could control the element as well to neutralize its effect. How can he take in so much power? His body should nt be able to handle it, 
There must be something wrong with this setup. Naruto concluded as it was too much to believe that a random demi could use his abilities so well. Naruto observed the enemy as his form had been lost the element, his eyes were turning scarlet. Is he losing himself to the power? Jason can you hear me? Let go of the necklace it's dangerous. I promise I only want it back nothing more. Naruto shouted once more hoping he would listen but all it did was lead him to attack as he focused once more. Never, it my father's gift Jason shouted as he slashed with his blade throwing lightning slashes at him which he dodged and countered with earth spikes for distraction while using wind spears from all directions. Naruto charged his armor along with his axe with wind power and rushed in from a blind spot as Jason's sight was covered by the attacks. Jason just smiled and didn't move as a barrier of lightning covered him and Naruto collided with it, the attack was more powerful than Jason expected and it caused an explosion from the collision. Naruto didn't let the opportunity slip and attacked even as he fell throwing his axe along with wind spears which cut off Jason's arm while his spear did some minor damages increasing the bleeding. Ah Jason screamed in pain as he bled from the arm, less than a quarter was left as the remaining had been cut apart by the sharp winds. You bastard I will kill you Jason gritted his teeth and shouted in rage as the power corrupted his soul, the power of immortals was not supposed to be used by mortals especially not power inherited from the Otsutsuki. Stop Jason Don T do this Naruto screamed as he got up and rushed him, grasped the necklace before Jason could act and retreated causing Jason to collapse as power left his body. No, give it back. I need it, you monster I want let you Jason muttered weakly as his vision become dark the blood loss was taking its toll. Naruto quickly touched his arm and closed the wound but as he was feeling relieved suddenly an attack came at him, it was too fast to dodge. Jason a feminine scream was heard as an arrow pierced Naruto's lung, he had managed to shift. He quickly moved away and activated the wind around him for extra protection. The scene behind him was not as expected, the dragon had been taken down but Albion was grounded with too much damage while Ella hadn't been able to take the duo out. Another artifact Naruto thought as he saw Leo clad in flames which were too hot for a demi, he had melted everything around him without a problem and Ella was having trouble. On the other hand enemy reinforcement had arrived, the hunters, we need to leave. Ella retreat Naruto shouted as he moved towards her and threw spears at the duo which hit the girl in the leg causing her to fall but Leo was unharmed and charged through them. Damn why is my luck so bad? Naruto wanted to curse. Ella watch out Naruto screamed as he saw multiple attacks heading her way but he wasn't fast enough. I need to do this. Sorry Gia Naruto thought as he took in the power of the world and appeared in front of Ella blocking all attacks. Kill them all. The virus needs to be cleansed he heard the whispers calling out for destruction as his eyes shined red and it resonated with his soul as an ancient being called out to him. Naruto endured the hate and focused on the task but it was pointless, he realized he had been pierced by the arrows through his heart and face, he was in a painless state so he hadn't realized it. Another artifact. Wind Naruto Ella screamed in despair as she enveloped him in her embrace and tried to escape but the bombardment by the hunters along with Leo made it impossible. No, Naruto muttered as tears fell down his cheeks, Ella fell from the sky along with him and she was disappearing. Dead. No you can't Naruto screamed as the rage overcame his resistance and he pointed towards the scum, his sight went dark and he felt like he was sinking into the darkness. Gia watched the battle with disbelief. Everything had gone wrong that it felt like a bad joke. This can't happen, my Naruto can't be hurt she muttered as her eyes moved around crazily. How dare you filth do this? She screamed with her domain in absolute rage, she seemed to have lost all restraints as the world shook with her anger and it looked like all life was going to be devoured. Calm down sister a woman with dark appearance said as he touched Gia. Nix, are you going to stop me? Gia looked at her sister with anger. I wouldn't really care but do you really want your boy toy to suffer father's wrath? You know how father gets when you break his rules, people around you suffer. You should have more confidence in him, he seemed interesting if not too nice for my taste. Nick said laughingly. Yes, Naruto should be able to do this, she muttered in a daze. Thanks sis. I would made it worse by doing this she said in a clam tone as her feelings settled down. No problem Nick said as she vanished Naruto please come back soon. I don't want to be alone anymore. It was like Naruto heard her words that he woke up and surfaced from a dark pond and looked to see that he was in a nightmarish place. Ah Naruto screamed in rage as he got out of the dark waters, his eyes filled with hate as they looked around for his enemies. 
Huff. Huff he breathed in hard as he could not find a target for his hate and punch the ground in frustration. Damn. Damn why would they not listen? Why did Ella and Alice have to die? I am sorry he finally stopped and laid on the dark earth with tears of regret from his eyes. You should have killed them they were filth just like the rest of their kind. Fulfill your duty, child of mine. The voice tempted him to give in to his hate but he shook his head. Get out of my head Naruto said as he tried to see where the connection led to but he couldn't find anything. Everything has gone wrong since I have been reborn, Gia was right. No more mercy, if they don't listen once they are dead. Those three have already lost their chance, next time I will erase them for this. Naruto concluded as he got up, his eyes was flickering from green to black and his aura was changing from peaceful to threatening to signify the changes to his soul but it was still in between and not decided. It takes time to change from principle you held for so long. If I am here the other three will also be here so I juts probably meet up with them first. Naruto thought as he calmed down and buried his guilt inside as mopping around will not solve his problems. Naruto looked ahead and all he could see was the rocky surroundings with no life in sight except the monsters shaped like wolves eyeing him hungrily. He didn't mind them as they were too weak to be of any importance and looked around, he found nothing else so he decided to kill the beasts and devour their power before moving on. With the wind to enhance his speed Naruto killing them within seconds and absorbed their existence but the change was minuscule as they were too weak. He walked straight hoping to find a monster that can talk and find any information about Ella and Alice or Albion as he couldn't sense anything here in this dark place. Naruto walked with a cautious gait but after a while he realized that the atmosphere was affecting him negatively, his skin was turning grey and his nature powers were fighting the taint. It was just cosmetic change either as he felt his aggression rise and felt desire to lash out for no reason, che. Naruto clicked his tongue in annoyance and focused his powers on his body to clear away the problem and it did so as his mind was not weak to be influenced so easily. This place is definitely troublesome and out of my comfort zone. Even my connection to nature is weak here. Naruto muttered as he continued along the path, he felt that since he woke up his body had strengthened a lot and concluded that it was the affect of using the power without restraint before death. But will it increase more if I did it again? Naruto wondered as he considered alternatives to increase his powers and as he moved along the sightings of monsters increased, he could see huge waves of beast of various forms in the field. That's a lot, it feel like seeing the huge waves of Zetsu in the war. Naruto thought as all he could see was these beings dotting the landscape and he decided to take another path where he might be overwhelmed. Changing direction he headed for the mountains and climbed with ease, here he saw fewer monsters as the footing was dangerous. He killed anything that he came across and devoured it without any thought but the increase was low and even worse was that without Gia the efficacy was lower. You seem to be doing well he heard feminine voice from all directions and looked around but found nothing. No need to be so alarmed, Naruto. I am a friend. Naruto heard the voice close to his ears as arms coiled around his chest and he felt the warmth of a woman pasted onto his back. He felt that she was too strong for him now as he couldn't move so he stopped struggling as he felt no malice, who are you and what do you want? Good boy. I am Nemesis so you should guess why I should be here. She whispered into his ears enjoying his reaction and giggled. Balance, justice and vengeance. Did my soul attract your attention Olympian? Naruto said with his voice leaking with rage as he started to want to strangle her out of this world. Relax. I am not like the rest. Also you seem to have let your anger take the best of you. I am not an Olympian but a primordial, Naruto or should I call you uncle? He <laughs> he nemesis chuckled at the thought as she had learned this from her mother. Sorry, I still haven't calmed down. But could you release me first if you want to talk? Naruto released some heavy breaths to calm down and said in a cool manner. Okay but you really didn't react to being called uncle so you are interested. Nemesis said with a smile as she let him go and he turned to see her beautiful appearance. She stood at the height of one. Eight meters with long black hair and her eyes were black as well as her clothes. Too much black like she looked at him and said what do you want? Naruto was not distracted and asked what was important. I want to help you fight for justice because I am always on the right side also mother asked for a favor as she owed Aunt Gia. Nemesis answered honestly as she sat down on a boulder. How much can you help? Naruto inquired about the limits as he remembered Gia was bound by laws. I can tell you information and if you fight the titans, you will need my strength. Why would I fight the titans? Naruto asked not wanting believe his thoughts but her words confirmed them. 
Because they guard the gates, if you want to go out you will need to fight them and they are at full strength in this realm at the moment. Things get worse every minute, so you will fight them and I get out? How silly, Naruto. No, you will fight them with my power at your disposal but only a certain percentage so your survival still hinges on your skills. Nemesis said with a friendly smile. Thank you, so you said information. Where are my comrades and any advice? Naruto said as he looked around. I can't help you with that but my advice is to go in that direction, you will find something important. Nemesis said as she pointed to the right but the mountain was in the way. Beyond that there is a swamp what is it? Go and find out Nemesis said as she got up and walked in the direction, Naruto looked at for a while and decided to follow. In the human world. What just happened? Leo thought as he stood there looking at the destruction, the city had been wrecked and miles of land had been leveled killing countless. If he was serious we would have died so why didn't he? Leo pondered and remembered how it was before the battle. The guy was nice and only asked for the necklace Leo thought as he looked towards his friend who was still unconscious and without an arm. It was Jason who reacted aggressively for no reason and then before this happened I saw that he had become unstable. Why? Leo was feeling lost and out of his zone here, and wished for someone to provide him answers. Leo, we need to go and fight the giant. He heard Jason's sister calling out to him, even now she was angry but duty called. What about Jason? We will leave him with Piper and some of my comrades, she replied in a calm tone. Okay Leo said as he followed I will look into it later but I feel it might be connected to these things that we got from our parents, even I felt invincible using it. Leo mused as he touched his bracelet. What kind of thing is it and why did they give such power to us? Am I being too paranoid? In Olympus, Zeus sat in his garden as he enjoyed the show of his weak little child fighting the monster. Even with such low power that being managed so well and my little Jason has done good but needs more practice. I still need you Jason or else I will need to use the worthless brats with lower talent to draw out the power. More time is needed so much power in it but I need a sacrifice for it. You are such sweet child listening to my words, I will immortalize your heroic actions once this is over. Zeus thought with a smile as he drank wine. You know you should rest for a while, the place you are going is very dangerous. Nemesis advised, her calm voice only heard by him as she moved like a shadow. Naruto thought on her words and could feel the tangs of impatience so he decided to accept her advice as he might make mistakes. Thanks. I will rest for a while. Naruto said as he sat down beside a boulder, protecting him from view except from aerial view. I should gather strength now and grow enough to take on any unknown threats. The kids using my power, for some reason are able to use it and force out its strength, even though it's not even 1%. Killing more beasts is the only path I have or if I can just kill one of those titans. I hope nothing happened to Ella, I took responsibility and she died because of my mistake. There are so many monsters here, please don't be hurt. Same goes for Alice, she is a new friend and she has helped to the best of her abilities so I shall not give up on her as well. Albion, I will try finding him and see if he wished to serve or not. Naruto thought as he stared at the ground and played with the dirt with his finger, drawing doodles. You know, it is rude to ignore a friend and you have been staring at the ground for half an hour. Why don't you to talk to me? Nemesis said from above the boulder, she was laying on it and her head was hanging down beside his face. Sorry, just thinking of my next act and setting up priorities straight. What do you want to talk about? Naruto muttered in a calm tone, without a smile as he didn't feel like smiling as it would be forced and until he gets back what he lost it will be gone. You don't have to worry about your friends or women, they are all right and doing wonderful according to my opinion. Nemesis supplied so as to lighten his mood, it was depressing and now she understood what Gaia's words meant that when he was sad it felt like the sun or the world went dim. Really, are you sure? Naruto perked up and asked absolutely and you will see them soon so stop being so depressed, the world hasn't ended yet. Nemesis muttered in a soft tone as she sat by his side, she was interested in him as she hadn't really seen any worthy Avengers and Justice fighters for centuries. Thank you, that makes me feel better. I really had the impression that you would be someone hard to talk to but you seem really nice. Naruto smiled as he felt the weight inside his heart lighten as he knew she wasn't lying. Hee <laughs> hee you might be the first person to say that, Naruto. I change according to the place and person, you are worthy of receiving kindness as there is no evil in you. Do tell how you kept yourself so clean. 
Nemesis chuckled and asked in a curious tone as she looked at him with her dark eyes that were like pools of darkness. I am honored that you think so. I just do what my heart tells me and it doesn't wish for death and violence. I do not wish to see the world in pain. I promised a lot of people and carry their burdens so I shall not let them down. Does that make sense? Naruto explained slowly and asked. He didn't know if he got the point across. I do and it is a beautiful ideal but can you really go about it without causing pain because that sounds like you will control the people to act as you wish. Nemesis added her thoughts to his explanation and it shocked him to the core. What? Control them to see as I do? Isn't that what Kaguya did and what Madara wanted? Was my dream also leading to such a conclusion? Humans are fragile and selfish beings, they are beautiful but ugly at the same time. Want my choice have to be mind control in the end if I wish for no pain. Naruto pondered closely his ideals with a realistic view since he had already read more history in this world and especially since it was about people without chakras so it gave him another perspective. Don't go silent on me, did you it give you more to think about? Nemesis tapped his cheek and asked. Your words made me think deeper into my ideals but I already have the answer. Pain will be given to some and this people will be erased as they don't follow the rules, I already have the capacity to sense a person inner persona so I shall judge them all even if it pains me. Humans fear as well and act on it but if it is an invincible force they will never even consider resistance. I will make it so there is no reason for fights and I will fix everything in the world before I can ever rest, it is a promise I made and I always keep my promises till the end. Naruto said in a confident tone as the energy inside settled into a dark golden as he had found himself and would not waver anymore. Wonderful. Your soul and persona seemed to be so wishy-washy before but now it is hard as adamantine. An unbreakable will is what you possess and it has surfaced completely, I don't think you will have those difficulties like before. Nemesis said in a happy tone as she held his chin and looked into his eyes, he didn't look away or feel anything from it which brought a smile on her face. Wonderful indeed. A fine specimen he is. Aunt Gaia has good taste, I didn't think she would choose someone right after her previous blunders. Nemesis thought as she let him go. While Naruto was resting, in a region of Tartarus where time seemed to be acting in an unusual manner, one woman named Ella was going through conflict. Ella had changed since the time she left Naruto's side as she had been trapped in this place for two months. She had eaten the monsters raw, her feathered wings had become hard and caked with blood and her eyes were filled with madness. She wore a red bikini top and bottom which she commanded with her mind, in her hand she carried a whip which had the powers of lightning. Ella had gone through enormous change and built an obsession as she yearned to see Naruto with intensity. Get out of Ella's way, Ella wants Naruto. She screamed as she cut through a horde of monsters with her wings that were like steel swords sharp and cut through them like nothing. She had been lucky as she had ended up falling into a pit of blood, blood of a dark dragon which corrupted her mind slightly along with the negative influence of Tartarus. Naruto, Naruto she cried out in desire as she felt frustrated, she was lost and hadn't seen anything but the monsters in the forest. Where is Naruto? Where does Ella need to go? It has to be a trap, a trap. A monsters is responsible for this, what could it be? Ella thought as she flew high above the forest and she couldn't see far ahead just like before and every time she returned to the same place. Ella needs to leave, Naruto needs Ella and Ella needs Naruto. She muttered while her head moved around to locate the target. Finally it seems she had qualified the requirements as Ella saw a new beast, it was sitting atop the hill and she knew what it was. A manticore Ella muttered as she looked at it with deep hatred, it was different from the usual kind as it was much larger and was twice the size of an elephant. You will pay for delaying Ella she cried out as she flew towards it her clawed feet ready to cut through its skin when she saw the thing react to her speed. Its tail held high, the beast shot stingers towards Ella which she dodged by moving to the side and quickly taking altitude. Little harpy, do you think I am some tame monster? Get down here and become part of me, there is no escape from here and you will fall just like the rest. The manticore talked in an arrogant tone as he looked at Ella with disdain, harpies were lower beings in its eye and it had been blessed by its master. Ella will kill you ugly beast, you have wasted Ella's time and Ella's chance with Naruto. You shall pay the price dearly. Ella declared in an aggressive tone, she held no doubt about her abilities and she knew that victory was the only outcome. Haha, a harpy challenging me is a hilarious joke. Are you going to tickle me with your feathers or what? The manticore laughed as he roared causing a shockwave and shooting needles again, these attacks passed the speed of sound. 
Ella watched the pattern and saw the opening. She swooped down at full speed and whipped the manticore's face. The whip hit the eyes and shocked the beast from the delicate spot but it wasn't dead as it moved around wildly and continued its barrage. Ella was hit by a needle on her left wing but she didn't cry out or hesitate as she tied down the tail with her whip and cut it from the base. Taste your own medicine beast. She roared as she used the stinger to pierce the beast sides, plunging it inside the heart. Naruto would be happy to eat the beast. It is large and must contain a lot of energy. Ella said happily as her wing restored itself to the ideal condition and she carried the large corpse as she flew through the weird region. Father was truly weird today. I don't remember him being so open and why would he give me something like this? Nico thought as he sat on top of a building after meeting Hades and looked at the crown in his hand. Crown of darkness why would he give me such a thing? Isn't this thing too valuable to be in my hand and I feel like it has too much power in it, maybe even higher than father's? Or am I thinking too much? Father, wouldn't hurt me and I always visit so I can just check with him if I have problem. Nico mused as held it in his hand and checked it. Does he want me to use it because of the new threats and that ominous prophecy of the death of the old order? Maybe or it just because he wants me safe, I can wonder all I want but only he can tell me why. Let's try it out and try to close the gate first. Nico thought as he placed the crown on his head and it connect with his soul. Such power, I feel invincible. What is Zeus up to, giving such artifacts to children? It makes no sense, is he trying compensate for the misdeeds he has done? No, that couldn't be. I refuse to believe that, he must be planning something. I am really getting tired of his plays, with this it is final. I shall take him down soon. Neptune thought as he stood up from his throne and appeared in the Roman camp. Son, I hope you have been doing well. Neptune muttered in a friendly tone his favorite son Percy was getting ready for bed. Father? Percy turned around to see the large man that had appeared without a sound. Yes, it has been some time since we saw each other and I am sorry that I can't return your memories but do not worry as they will return soon. Neptune said as he walked closer and hugged Percy. Why is my memory gone? I don't know how the person was thinking so I can't comment on it. I see. Father why are you here? I was told only important task or something like that would be worthy of your presence. Percy said in an annoyed tone, he didn't like the fact that the children couldn't meet their parents as they wished. I am sorry but that is not under my control or else, I would love to spend time with you. For now, I am here to give you this gift. It is the aqua ring and it allows you power over water that you cannot imagine but don't wear it, keep it as a necklace or in your pocket. Only use it when real danger comes and you have no other choice. Neptune warned as he presented a ring of blue color and designs of water dragons. Percy accepted the ring. I will be careful with it. Thank you for caring for the warning. Would you like to stay for a drink or something? I need to be going but soon we will have all the time together. Neptune replied as he kissed Percy on the forehead and vanished as he didn't wish to mess with Zeus who had started acting strange since last month when he sensed that large energy signal. In Mount Olympus, one of the purest beings of the world was sitting by the hearth as she usually did. She had been trapped in that hall by some means that she could not recognize, the little brother she cared for had showed his evil fangs as he threw her aside with disdain. Why did this have to happen? History is repeating itself and Zeus seems to head for something even worse than father. Did my kindness kill those people? Was it the reason more will die? I had trusted them to make the right decision but they even killed that person. Such a pure soul one I have never seen. I should have acted but I made excuses and did not wish for conflict. Now it seems to be snowballing out of control, he is out there and his existence calls out to me. The sense of dread is increasing, why the others have not felt it? Hestia questioned as she looked into the flames that danced casting shadows in the room. Is kindness so wrong? Was I wrong in my inaction? Hestia questioned, her voice felt raw with emotion as she saw destruction of countless lives. Why did you have to come here, mysterious soul? Hestia said as she wished for an answer and wished that it never happened. Even if she desired a meeting, it was better that he didn't appear. Is there a way I can leave this cage? I have stayed here for three months now. I need to act even if it is a little bit. Hestia thought and with a determined look, she carved out a piece of her soul as she fought against the cage and let it free from Olympus. Hestia collapsed in pain and exhaustion as she finished but she had a peaceful smile, at least I managed to act. I am invincible, I am invincible kill them all, kill them all Jason heard the call as she woke with a start and his eyes shone with lightning. Jason, how are you feeling? 
Piper asked in a worried tone as she sat beside him, they were at a hotel. Piper. What happened to the enemies? What happened after I lost consciousness? Jason asked and he could help but look for the necklace which was a sign of his father's love and care. They are dead and quarter of the city was destroyed by that person. Piper replied. Her tone was somber as she remembered the cries of despair as she had passed by the impact site. Monster. Piper, it was a monster. Where is my necklace? Jason corrected her terminology as she seemed to sympathize with it. Here Piper said as she passed him the cursed necklace. Jason, do you really think that? Do you really feel no guilt for what just happened? We could have all been fine if you had just given away this necklace. What is it in the first place, you went crazy using it? Piper questioned in an emotional tone, the guilt was eating at her as she felt that this wouldn't happen if they just gave the damn necklace. Piper calmed down. I obviously feel bad for the losses but this is a gift from my father. Do you understand how much worse it could have been, if that monster took it? He would have erased the whole city. I could not let him take away and you could not see his real form. He was hiding it but I could see that ugly form, it reeked of evil and made me react like that. Jason explained as he remembered the scene when Naruto asked for the necklace, his real form had been revealed. Jason held Piper's head and kissed her on the lips to calm her down. He cared for her and didn't want her to be hurt. Feel better. Somewhat but you should nt wear it either, you were going crazy. Piper advised as she got up to get some food. Jason watched her go and then looked at the necklace, he smiled happily. How can I let it go? This power is what I need and with it, I can gain anything I wish. This isn't the full thing, I wonder how much stronger I can get. No more tragedies only happiness. Jason thought as he put it on and his flashed with red lightning. The cursed object that drew on the souls was affecting his mindset and resonating with the base desires thanks for watching.